the Pat McAfee Show. There'll be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Feel Good Friday, November 26th, 2021. And I hope, and we hope, your Thanksgiving was spectacular. Yeah! Yeah. Hope you had a great day yesterday, enjoying family, enjoying food. Too much of it, to be quite honest. Mm -hmm. I ate way too much. I've been dumping all morning. (laughs) I probably will have to sprint out of here during one of the breaks today as we go live for the next few hours, talking about everything that happened on the football field during Thanksgiving, what's going to happen this weekend. And there are some big college football games happening today, Mm -hmm. and we will talk to people who care about that to tell us how we should care about that. Oh, in hell yeah. Two fine gentlemen. It was great seeing you guys at Ty Schmidt at Boston Connor. In the spirit of family, another Schmidt is in the studio. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, not in the studio, in the office. In the office. Uh, Brad Schmidt is here. Mm-hmm. Big bad Brad Schmidt mm-hmm. 14 <laughs> is here. That's right. Hell yeah. You spitting images of each other, by the way. Oh, yeah. And it's not like. It, it, just the head shape, the, the just, and then I feel like the mannerisms pretty similar. Mm-hmm. It is great to have another Schmidt in the office. Though. Yeah, it's nice. You know, he made the trek from Iowa. They left yesterday at like four p.m. So got here last night with his wife and my nieces and nephews and my mom at like one a.m. But you know, I haven't seen him in a while. I haven't seen him since my wedding. So it's good to have the guy in town. Hey, that's what yeah. it's all about. That's, that's right. That's all. Hey, the guy right. the How's the gobble ghoul, Connor? It was great seeing you yesterday. Fantastic. Thank you for the Dalton, uh, uh, no, not Dalton. Yeah. Yeah. Dalton Schultz Schultz touchdown yesterday. I had a any time touchdown score parlay between Ezekiel Elliott and Dalton Schultz, and he had a touchdown. Oh, yeah. Then they called it back, and I was like, well, Mm -hmm. there it goes. And then, no, no, when they need one, here we go. He's coming back. Shout out to him. We'll talk about the Mm Raiders-Cowboys game, but it was great seeing you yesterday. Fantastic. Speaking of family. Mm. At Tone Diggs, his family came in. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Italians uh, made the pilgrimage left on the map. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. Came to Indiana to see their boy, huh? Uh-huh. His bride. Uh-huh. And they brought the gabagool. Yeah. Yeah. How was Thanksgiving at the Diggs's yesterday? Thanksgiving was awesome. We fried a turkey. Uh, House is still fucking standing. Hey. 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 A lot of internet videos of those. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of wine. It was, a, it was a beautiful thing. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, tell Coach Diggs and the family we said uh, thanks for the gobble hey, Thank you, Coach. Thanks, yeah. Coach. A couple pepperoni rolls oh, and yeah. pumpkin yeah. roll here. Oh, delicious. I mean, there is indigestion happening oh, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's things going down and out and coming right back up. But boy, those pepperoni <laughs> rolls in the gobble goo pepperoni yeah. rolls. We're unbelievable. Thanks, Coach Diggs. We appreciate it. Thank you, Coach. Everybody uh, everybody in the back, shout out to all the boys. Uh, It's great to be here and joining us in an attic in Ohio, a college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, and uh, yesterday's guest on the Ariel Helwani show. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, A.J. Hall. What's up? (laughs) Happy Thanksgiving, dude. How's the gobble ghoul over there with the Hawks? Uh, Happy Thanksgiving, man. There's probably a lot more... um, Italian heritage in my Thanksgiving than yours, I'm guessing, unless you hung out with the Diggs family. Well, well, I had well, gobble yeah. at the house. Yeah, and the melon with the thing around yeah, it. The yeah, melon oh, that's with, uh, the melon with the prosciutto. Yeah, 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 me- melon with what around it? Exactly. 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 No, no. Exactly. I'm not Italian. Dude. I, Pat, you and I are not Italian, so we can't speak like that. No. Whoa, 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 whoa. I took a 23 and me. I don't know what you're talking about. And I have a 0.01% that, that came from the boot country. All right. And when I say I know good There's a politician that got in some trouble for claiming the same thing. Well, Who's that? Different, I believe there was a different narrative potentially behind what they were okay. pitching. <laughs> Mine is just strictly the gobble the gobble. Gobble. Yeah, 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 Come on. Um, I hope you had an incredible Thanksgiving with the family over there, though. Was it all the Hawks? All the Was there a hockey represented, yeah. college football represented? Was everybody in town? Ooh. Uh, everybody is not in town, but yeah, a lot of Hawk family and the other uh, Quinn family. Everyone was 
was involved. Both my brothers came, my parents and their kids, so it was fun. You know, Chuck was talking about missing the Turkey Bowl for like 35 years. That's real. Like Thanksgiving and Christmas and stuff, whenever you're into football. Not, I mean, I guess it's a big deal, but it's been nice here during retirement to, like, enjoy these. You know what I mean? Like, actually oh, enjoy yeah. them. Because even whenever maybe you're not playing on Thanksgiving, you still have a game in a couple of days, probably a weigh-in on the Friday morning. <laughs> so you're enjoying yep. Thanksgiving a little bit differently. It's been nice, and I'm happy that we're in the uh, holiday season officially. A mm -hmm. uh, lot of sales going on right now around the world. Go ahead and get your stuff. Hey, get all your stuff. That's okay. right. We have a sale going on at store.com. Pat McAfee Show.com, still 25% off. I have no idea how much longer that'll last. Okay. Uh, well, get, a, get in there while it lasts. Then. And we told you since Big Sale Friday that it, it was on you if you ordered early enough to get it. That's right. It's true. Small business like, Tuesday. Small how's it been going? Like, how's it been going over the last couple of days? A lot of people have been getting their shit. I've been getting a lot of people tweeting okay. me saying, hey, Sweet. I got your stuff. I ordered it on Friday. That's great news. Hey, shout out to CFO Phil. Hey, hey boy, Phil. Phil. Thank you, Phil. In the merch store. Store. Way to go. I mean, there was a couple things that were 20000 The Booker's up. probably cleaned it up for you, didn't they? Yeah. I think the Booker's right. talking right. to you. All right, listen, it's a feel good Friday. Feel Come good on. Friday. Come feel on. Good Friday. Feel good, feel good Friday. Happy Thanksgiving. The more you can do, right? Happy Thanksgiving to the Bookers as well. Yeah, right. Happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Bookers. They won't see this, but. <laughs> they don't know what we just did. <laughs> Still trying to track down Tony Saragusa. Oh, is he uh, coming on? Today? I, I don't know. Today? <laughs> That'd be great, wouldn't it? The goose. <laughs> uh, how was Ariel Hawani show? I only got to see the clips. I'm going to listen to it tonight. I was uh, excited to see you two got a chance to chat, pal. Yeah, it was fun. Ariel's he's very good at his job. I think he's uh, he feels natural doing that. It was fun. I, I enjoyed talking to Ariel, and it was it was tough because I was just waiting for him to become the Ariel that he is when he comes on this show. And oh, so yikes. he was more professional and I, it, I gave him credit for that but it was hard for me sometimes to stay serious yeah i have my only real conversation i've ever had with somebody in like the last three years when it comes to like interview stuff was with ariel in the one where he painted us red yep. painted yeah. me red in yep. mm -hmm. and then yep. in the conversation yep. with you by the way ariel took a shot at the boys yeah really he took a shot at zito took a shot at foxy, foxy. Oh. Billy, said, tubes. billy tubes he's all they had to do from the studio or whatever it's like you know we're trying to make it as nice as possible this is the best camera we got with the best connection we got yep. we wouldn't do that to you ariel but i don't like these taking a shot at the zito production That's either messed up <laughs> i don't love that not one yeah, bit. i'm confused by the whole thing we talked about it on his show like i'm still confused why why that was i don't think mine turned out red well i think it, yeah it didn't and i assume they learned from the one that they did with me and they're like oh we got to turn this particular setting off while we're recording thank you for it. that thank you for that you help no me problem. i mean that's what i'll do you know mm -hmm. like, i'll be the guy that's right you know i, I don't i don't love it but somebody's got to be the guy that just goes out there and just gets fucked up and then mm -hmm. everybody else comes in behind and gets to enjoy it you know I'll be that guy if I have to in certain situations. But I'm happy you got to chat with him. I can't wait to learn more about you via that conversation. I can't wait to listen to the whole thing. And uh, shout out to Ariel. Run a good program. Right? Run a good program. Run a good program. Run a good, program over there. good program over there. Good program. Uh, speaking of good programs, there was three football games on yesterday. Let's do a couple takeaways, shall we? Okay. Bills kill Saints. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Saints might be dead. Uh, Bills win. Not pretty, but the score is so large. We, it, it, if you were to nitpick how the Bills looked, you'd be an asshole as a sports mm -hmm. analyst yep. whenever they win 31-6 on Thanksgiving Day and the Super Boost hits. Your thoughts out in that game, AJ? I mean, I think you pretty much hit it. I thought the Bills looked pretty good. They did what they needed to do, and, and it was never really a game. So I think they were – I wouldn't nitpick on them. No, but I think there's people saying, well, the Bills didn't look that good either. You know, Who cares? Like, yeah, like, I mean, They won 31-6 yeah. on Thanksgiving. And against an NFL team, that was 5-5 five and five at the time, right? Yeah, so. yeah, bingo. And they're – I mean, the Saints were in an interesting spot, especially mm. with Drew Brees calling the game. And you think about it, how Drew Brees probably thinking about it. It's like, wow, this team looked a lot different. Now, they had to cut like nine people going into the season for the salary cap. Let's remember that. Mm. They got rid of a lot of players. Still have a lot there. Got rid of a lot. They're going to have to figure some things out. But the Bills get a much-needed win after last week's Colts' devastating loss. So congrats to the Bills. And thank you for helping us out with our Super Boost. Yeah. yeah. Huge. There you go, Bills. Huge. By the way, Super Boost is looking to go back to, to back. back. Back to back. Back to back. back. That's what we're trying to do this weekend. we got a big one coming. Mm -hmm. Imagine if this thing gets on a heater, AJ. That's what the heater's doing. It's fucking. Running. I don't really know the difference though. Can you explain the difference between your the thing you shut down and the super boost? Well, I don't have time. 
mean, <laughs> okay. Follow you shut down along. a Thursday parlay, I guess, and a super boost is just – is it just one bet? A super boost is just one bet that we pick to boost the odds yeah, for. So if the that's odds – That's all are, I need. Okay. What's your deal? Well, I mean, if you, if you, well, if you ask like for Like, for instance, then. this was Bills minus three and a half versus the Saints without Kamara. Now, this particular graphic could not be put up on FanDuel Sportsbook because us saying without Kamara is basically saying, like, come on. Come on. Which, come is, on. Why, which is why we kind of made the pick, which as soon as Rappaport, you know, we had the bet already picked. We had the super boost already placed. But then Rappaport was like, it looks like there's no way Kamara's. Will you make it official, rap or not? Mm-hmm. It looks like he's not. And I think that changes the Saints mightily. Obviously, he's one of the most explosive players. But the risk-free same-game parlay uh, – uh, was uh, only a selection of one game, and it was uh, multiple things had to happen. That's what a parlay is. It was risk free. This is just a super boost of a bet. Super boost could be of a parlay, though. Like, let's not square rectangle thing here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Square rectangle thing here. Because a super boost is just any bet that we like. Might be a teaser, might be one team doing one thing, might be a prop that we find deep in there. What I'm trying to do and what we're trying to do is uh, an actual strategic approach to get on a heater because mm-hmm. we feel like if the super boost was to get on a heater we're raking in more money than we should be from FanDuel that's good gobble ghoul for, yeah. all, for all parties oh, yeah. you know so that's what we're trying to do AJ we just got to get going this was supposed to be the third one that hit remember Savage the pick happened yeah. on Sunday so now we got to get going AJ okay good now this is good because you're educating me for when FanDuel is legal in Ohio so I, I get all my mistakes out of the way now is it coming I don't know I'm as, I was gonna ask you uh, so you haven't heard anything on any local news that told you anything different than, well, we know where it was okay, but what's that mean, Gonzo says? Uh, seven to ten years. Yeah. yeah. That's basically yeah. what he said, right? Oh, he said two much. years, yeah. he mm-hmm. said. Got to set up all the guardrails. Anyways, congrats to the Bills, and we appreciate yeah, you. Yeah, they win. Yeah, they go above blue. Obviously, the Lions continue to suck. Oh. Okay, the Lions <laughs> think the Bears get a win in a field goal fashion, and if you were uh, – Lions cover, though, by the way. Hey. My, I won two and one yesterday. You won one and two because oh. the Lions oh. did I cover. pushed you. You're welcome. I pushed you to take the Lions. You did kind of bully me into it, and so did the crew, but my initial – my initial thought was the Lions here, yeah. just because the Nagy drama, the Nagy drama, the team drama, ownership's coming out saying, we didn't say we're going to fire him after Thanksgiving. Fans said, well, we've been saying you're going to fire him since Thanksgiving. We're actually saying it to his kids. It just seems like there's so much drama around Chicago. They get a win, but in the end, I think the Bears fans say that they lost either way because the Lions lose by two. Bears get a win because of Cairo, and maybe Nagy stays. For another year. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, maybe another year, Z. Sure. Huh? What do you think? I absolutely hate it. I knew it was going to happen. The Lions, we try to give them the game, and they don't even know how to play the game. <laughs> it's absolutely horrendous. They should be out of the league. <laughs> Same shit. Lions. <laughs> Who calls two timeouts in a row? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Just win the game, dude. Go cry about it. <laughs> Piece of shit, MC, DC. <laughs> two, two, two timeouts in a row, then too many men, then too many men. What are they doing? <laughs> Have they ever played the game? Uh, that's a Bears fan. Okay, now let's go to the Lions fan. What a game, huh? Oh, hey, guys, what a game. What you guys game. thought watching that game that the Lions were going to win? I don't know any of you. You guys don't know football because the Lions do what the Lions do, and they choke every single time. Hey. People are now blaming Dan Campbell, the coaching staff. It's all hell. It's hey, time. let's talk about Big Sean, though. Huh? He won. Oh, oh, that was sick. Oh, oh, sick. Yeah. That was sick. Ah. Sitting in the arena. Oh, with Bounce the, back. With the uh, – oh, uh, like uh, confetti falling oh, yeah. down. Oh, yeah. They fucking stink so bad. Whoa. That's not what Pelissero said. So yeah. Bad. Pel- that's not what Tom Pelissero said. AJ, did you hear what Tom Pelissero said about the whole situation? No, I have no idea. Ty, hit me with it. What did he say? He basically said that uh, Dan Campbell, hey, listen, this guy, people are jacked up about this guy, and they should be because he's a great coach, and these players, they respond. They're going to fight for him, and they're, I mean, they're right there. They're going to get over the hump. And they're, Sheila, Sheila Ford And Ford-Hamp. Sheila Ford Hamp, you know, she knows what she's doing. I mean, she's really taking the reins on this thing. She wants a winner. She wants to win. She knows the NFL. The Lions, hey, they, it might not look great right now, but they're on the cusp of something truly special in Detroit. I, I love P- uh, Pelissero's. Wait, when did that happen? After the game yesterday. I love <laughs> I love Pelissero's commitment to being consistent, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he is consistently the memo 
from the NFL mm -hmm. to his brain, right to his mouth or to Twitter. That is just how it works. That's why at the beginning of there, to get in the character, Ty actually had to plug in to the to yeah, the to the neural yeah. link. It's amazing. He has an incredible talent. It is it is one of the best talents of all time. He could read this 615 page uh, Egyptian god book. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Egyptian gods. He could read this book right here. And as soon as he put it down, boom, retweet the entire, he'd be able to tweet the entire book. <laughs> yes. It's yep. amazing. It is an incredible talent. So that is obviously what the Lions PR is putting out there. Right. So how much of that can we believe? Maybe behind the scenes, MCDC, there is some momentum happening. Maybe it's not just the player. <laughs> maybe, maybe, it's the, uh, maybe it's the sponsorships and the ticket sales. Maybe yeah. the building is kind of buying in. Hey, wait a second, though. Hey, why would Pelissero feel like the need to say that after this game? Why do you feel like he has to stand mm. up like that? Because somebody hacked into his thing. Yeah. Sheila Ford yeah. Ham. Yeah. Sheila Ford Ham came. <laughs> Let me get in here. I need at least something. <laughs> okay. All right. My bad. You're right. That makes yeah. sense. <laughs> there may have been a small glitch uh, in their link as well. He kept referring to her as Sheila Hamp Ford. Oh, oh no. Oh, that. Tom. That's the right thing. Well, that's yeah. just a classic. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Auto correct. <laughs> <laughs> He's amazing. We love Tom. We're a big pro go <laughs> Pelicero the show. arrow show. show. Obviously, everyone knows Always that. have Love been. Tom. Always have been. When you do an interview with them, let them know that. We've always <laughs> been a big pro go Palacero. Is his here. back okay? Well, he was trying to get a Kleenex, uh, Kleenex into his daughter's uh, nose before she blew a little booger out. Yeah. So that's Maybe good that's daddy. why he couldn't figure out Sheila's real name, because his back messing up with the neural link. Listen, Pelicero's in good shape. That back was, what, two, three weeks ago? He's got to be way They're back. longer into, than that. Yeah, uh, a month ago? Yeah. I don't know. He's back to reporting. But anyways, let's, talk, let's report about the real news of yesterday. And it happened down there in Jerry World. And it's not just that Luke Combs absolutely fucking... Slaughtered it. Oh, yeah, it's gone. Long dick eyes, cold beard, never broke my heart. And then in that song, you know, put my dream down and tear them hard apart. To the Cowboys fans. Yeah. yeah. A lot of people found a lot of irony in that song being sung by a man who's had his heart broken by football teams and football experiences time and time again. Mm -hmm. And he was singing it to the Dallas Cowboys fans who seemed to maybe be going through that yet again for a 75th straight year. Mm -hmm. I don't know how expensive the long beers are at Jerry World. Uh, but I assume there was a lot of them taken down as they were watching that team lose by a field goal from a man who had food poisoning just a couple of days. Daniel Carlson, congrats to him on his third attempt. Yeah, yeah, three three plays to hit that game winner. Shout out to the people we're going to talk about right now. AJ, I want you to watch something real quick, and I want you to kind of take it in for what it is. You ready? Yep. Okay, ready? Ten, one, ten, two, ten, three, ten, four, ten, five, ten, six, ten, seven, ten, eight, ten, nine, ten, 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 eleven, ten, twelve, ten, thirteen, ten, fourteen. That's half the amount of flags that were thrown yesterday. Twenty-eight fucking flags thrown in that Cowboys Raiders games. They were going to the. They were, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. They were doing that 28 times. And while you're watching, you're like, hey, Ed, tell your son, Sean, that this ain't about him. Mm -hmm. Tell your son, Sean, that we get it. We get it. You can stop and go as you please and make a game as terrible as you want it. But I would like to also take a moment to maybe look at this from the other side of the table. Okay. For a hundred years, please put that graphic up. For one, oh no, no. 18 years. For the yeah. first time in 18 years, an NFL game had 14 plus penalties on one team, 14 plus <laughs> penalties on the other team, and 100 penalty yards for both of them at least. It has been 18 long years. Ooh. There's been so many refs that have come and gone that have tried to attempt this feat. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until yesterday that it was 
able to somehow pop onto TV in front of millions. And millions! In the second largest day of spectating football, that crew showed up and did the impossible. That crew showed up and did what no other crew has been able to do for almost two decades. That crew took over a game in a bad way and broke all the records. So to the refs, we'd like to say, congratulations! Yeah! You know what I mean? 18 years they've been trying to do that. <laughs> Long time. That's fucking. I think okay. I know what you mean now. That, that was that would have like that's a that's a bit that you guys had to talk about before the show. Like, look at you. Like, that's a real show. Thank you. Well, <laughs> we thought it'd be too easy. Thought it'd be too easy to get mad at them, you know, and tell them that they fucking stink and uh -huh. this isn't about you, and then go after how none of them are full time, so they don't give a fuck. One of them might be sitting at a computer scientist chair. Yeah. Uh huh. Right now. But anybody could do that. Anybody could say that the ref thing is all flawed. That you should be able to review everything. Why don't they just go into their ear and say, bad call, change it? That'd be easy to do. Yeah, yeah. they do sometimes. The game better. Yeah, they do sometimes, but not like... I mean, that pass interference that lost the game yeah. to the Cowboys. In uh, overtime. His head, what was he supposed to... Well, yeah, they do. I mean, whether you like the rule or not, there's no face guarding thing. That's not a thing, but you do have to turn your head. Yeah, but his head was getting... Held. Yeah, he, yeah. It was... Hey. Okay, that's what I was wondering. If there's a different crew on that game, would there be half the penalties, you think? Yeah, I don't know. And how many penalties were real and how many weren't and blah, 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 blah. It's just like... It certainly wasn't this many, but he did uh, Packers-Vikings last, last week, and there were a shitload of flags in that Remember, game, too. He also is a heel. He lo he's like one in eight now. Our home teams are now one in eight. In oh, the game. Yeah. yes. Oh. No home team won yesterday, by the way, for... Uh, Three years straight or something like that. Wow. Right? Why is it they have all their families sitting back at their house and taking up all their time before the game? No, I just I don't know if well, that's that right? it or if like playing on Thanksgiving is inconvenient for everybody, depending on if you traveled or not, you know? It's always in Detroit too. So well, yeah. it's like that's, <laughs> yeah. that's a good point. That's a good that point. Team. We <laughs> lost to the Steelers bad at home on Thanksgiving. I mean, that was a bad we lost bad. Yeah, that throw though. Pretty good. We're making its rounds. Yesterday. Pretty good. Shout out oh, to the yeah. NFL, putting that back out mm -hmm. there. I appreciate that a lot. Um, AJ, did you did you watch all the games? Did you get to watch all the games? And is there anything we missed from that Raiders Cowboys game that you would like to talk about? Michael Parsons seems to be man. I mean, he's rookie of the year for sure, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. Dak threw for three seventy five, something like that. That three. touchdown yeah. was that the Schultz up the seam at the mm -hmm. end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. that was beautiful. I I love Schultz on the ground with his arms up and his teammates like hitting him. Like that was awesome. And it felt like I don't know. I don't know how the Raiders. I give the Raiders credit, man. I give Derek Carr credit too. They kept fighting. They won. Deshaun Jackson takes like the first ball to the house. I mean, that was yeah. probably that was awesome. I, yeah. I felt you don't don't you feel good for him when you see him do that and make the plays that we've seen him make forever. I, it seems like he still has it. You know, yeah. everywhere he goes, he's making the same plays. And then he had the dark visor too. I uh -huh. mean, he looked he looked awesome. Congrats, Deshaun. Yeah. Yo. Derek Carr, though, let's say that we should congratulate him. It's a big time win on Thursday, beating Dak Prescott. Dak without his two weapons, uh, CD out because concussion reasons. Cooper out. Two games, four days, they lose, and Cooper out of because of Uncle COVID, which, by the way... Oh, no. AJ, I don't know if you've heard. What happened? Well, there's a new variant. That's oh, right. There's a new variant of this son of a bitch. What's this one called? Well, this one's called uh, Barry Sanders because it can't get tackled by any vaccine, That's right. <laughs> allegedly. That's right. you know, really? This thing is elusive. Very That's much what, so. It's the mutation of all mutations, my friend. That, uh, That's see, right. That's who we're <laughs> learning from. That's who we're learning from, so maybe it is a little dramatic, but... I mean, that sounds kind of scary if that's the case. Well, the Barry Sanders of uh, COVID's, yeah, this one can be. mutation of all mutations, is yeah. that what Gump says? Yeah. yeah, and that's what it's being described as. Wow. Tell you what, this one ain't quitting early either. This one's going to play out its full career. Yeah, yeah. Well, he didn't, by the way. Could you imagine playing that long, that good for that bad of a franchise? Oh, oh, man. Just every day had to be a mental battle. Like right now, Matthew Stafford is in the Rams' um, 
paradise, I'd assume, right now compared to where he was or whatever. But Lions fans watch Jared Goff and compare him to Stafford, I think. Foxy asked this morning, why is that guy in the NFL? How? How in the greatest league on earth is that the quarterback? He's talking about Goff. Goff started 10 of 10, hit TJ Hawkinson. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like 12 of 12. He was slinging that thing all over. He was juiced. Threw that touchdown early and was pumped. Oh, yeah. Ah. Passion. TJ Lang tweeted this. If we scored 20 points or more in every game this season, Lions would be 5 and 6. 20 points. That's all we need. Yeah. Not going to get it with Goff. Not no even way. close. Not, and, and it's not just Goff, by the way. Swift got hurt yesterday, too. Yeah, right? yeah not good. Early. Well, you can't name one wide receiver on the team either. Yeah. So I don't, th- I don't what are you know. Talking about? Yeah, you can't put it all on him. What is the wide receiver's name that you guys throw the ball to? Amon well, Ross Cephas was going to be the best wide receiver in the league. He TJ Hawkins. Right Hawkins. Yeah. Hawkins. Reynolds. Is awesome. Reynolds is good. Oh, Lions stink. They're so bad. No one had a better Thanksgiving than Matthew Stafford. His first one in how long oh. where he didn't have to step onto that field and get slaughtered. Oh, <laughs> you're right. That was real. Yeah. Hey, congrats to the Stafford family. Yeah. Congrats, yeah. Good Stafford. job, Stafford. Congrats to the Stafford family. You did it. AJ, there's big games this weekend, dude. Oh, yeah. What? What? Uh, isn't this the big, like, all the rivalry games in college, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not. I don't yeah, know. I don't, I mean, I don't, I don't know Ohio State, Michigan. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's talk about that now that we're here. We got JB coming in an hour. We'll talk about that whenever JB gets here. But okay. early thoughts. Your uh, Ohio State wins by 50, you think, up there? What's, in, the, what's the spread? I have no seven idea. and a half. So I'm taking I mean, Ohio State minus seven and a half for oh, sure. You can't. Yeah. I mean, this is as good as the Michigan team that they have faced in a while, right? I feel like. Yes. Yes. I don't know. I have not watched a single snap. Yeah, and Michigan's rolling. Stroud Michigan's, might win the Heisman, though. Yeah, Michigan's a solid team, but I, I mean, I, yeah, I feel good about Ohio State. Stroud's winning the Heisman. The guy and Ryan he's Day. Right. Hey, he's Ty, I'm sure you've seen it. Like Ryan Day's not messing around. Like he, he wants to put up 600 points. Yeah, especially against Michigan. You know, after Urban Meyer's touting that seven and zero thing around the chop house. Well, there's you know? a whole thing. Well, that too. There's a whole thing that happened. What back in the summer, Ty? Was it when Ryan Day came back to the team and said we're gonna put a hundred on him? I don't really remember that. Was that like Big Ten media days? I'm not an Ohio State insider. I thought you were. I don't know why. You were like, hey, Ty, is that what I, I was very flustered. I'm like, talking Ty about? and you no, my boots bad. on the yeah. ground? <laughs> something happened at Big – I don't – maybe it was Big Ten media day, and they asked – Harbaugh said something on a, on a conference call about Ryan Day, like a violation, recruiting violation. Ryan Day said, like, how about you just stick to coaching your team? And then Ryan Day, the report was he came back in that next team meeting – Lost his mind and said, "We're going to put a hundred on him." Oh, that's, that's awesome. awesome! He did say. Bobby that. Carpenter, I thought, tried to fight him at that media day when Harbaugh said that too. <laughs> yeah, was Bob there? You probably talked to Bob. I, I do like though that Bob Carpenter probably said something, and you're like, "Yeah, Ty, Ty, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ty, and General Bob." Well, Ty's, you know, I figured Ty knows all of the Big Ten because he's such an Iowa guy. Well, he just knows right. Tory Taylor and the Hawks. They got a uh, game today. They got Nebraska. Nebraska leaders and legends game. Oh, is that Rick? Oh, there's oh, a yeah. trophy on this one. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Every, they've played every Black Friday since I think Nebraska's been in the Big Ten. Usually a great game. Nebraska hasn't fared Nebraska. that well against the Hawks, so we'll see. What's the trophy look like? Uh, Massive pretty, piece of corn. No, Ooh. I'm pretty sure it fucking stinks. I can't think of what it is off the top of my head. They actually may have changed the name, too, because people, you know, leaders in the Le- uh, Legends division or whatever it was when the Big Ten did that, and then, like, 10 days later, it was like, yeah, this fucking stinks. Let's get rid of this. So, yeah, why'd you guys do that? How'd that one fly? Is, that that sa- is this the same... Um president now no this no. is a brand new president yeah, yeah. of big 10 right warren yeah when, when that leaders and legend thing happened i it like happened and came and went and i barely even knew it happened because i was like wait this this sure as hell wasn't there when i was there and then i, I didn't know who was where who had to okay that though that's the presidents of who was that jim delaney was the head of the big 10 at the time right so mm-hmm. so jim delaney and then jim delaney handed it off to warren Kevin Moore, yeah, like a year or two ago. Yeah, you guys are on a run, huh? You guys got good people oh, in power. Yikes. <laughs> you guys are on I don't, I don't. I mean, I don't have anything to do with who is running the Big Ten. I know, yeah, I know, I know but you and General Bob have been, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. you know, marching marching down through Chicago to, to get to the con. Is that the trophy? That's a great trophy. Yeah, Heroes what you, game? What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. maybe that is pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would love that. Who currently has it, Iowa? Uh, yeah. I hope Tory Taylor goes and gets it. You know that he's going to need to because there's a good chance I was quarterback only completes like six passes today. Nebraska still got uh, Martinez playing. Yeah, he's, he's out this game. Yep. Oh, oh it's no. like his sixth year, like they're actual start- sixth oh, year. Oh yeah, right? starting a true freshman today. So. Oh, Tory Taylor and that oh, defense guys, are going to. Oh, it is in uh, Lincoln though. Oh no! Uh-oh. Oh no! Uh-oh. Tough place. To also, play. it's a death game. 
um, a guy died, a Nebraska fan this year died, uh, and he said the only thing that he wants, he didn't like besides a funeral and stuff like that, is all Nebraska fans should go and put uh, an irrationally big bet on um, Nebraska to win this game. That's what he said when he was dying? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Shout out to that. Rest in peace. That guy. What a legend. So they started it like a GoFundMe and stuff like that, and they got like eight grand on the game today. Yeah. Luckily, oh. Kirk's dogs don't give a shit about that guy. So, <laughs> you know, may he rest in peace. <laughs> you think they'll pay for his funeral? After we beat their asses today, maybe. No, they're going to lose that eight grand and some juice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> going to land. I mean, that's a tough go. Tory Taylor doesn't care either. No, he doesn't. Hey, how many times do you want to say Tory Taylor today? <laughs> yeah, so many. So many times. Is that You got a couple other guys you like in the squad, right? No, Tory Taylor's the only one I know. The kicker, too. I think the kicker's great. Yeah, shoot it. Tory Taylor cut an actual promo. I didn't. I didn't get to see it. It was Anna for the branch. Anna shirt, for yeah. the branch. He cut an actual promo, and I was like, I fucking love this person. <laughs> I have. He. He said. Uh, he has an Australian accent, and he said he checked the weather in the south, and it was like eighty some degrees or something. And then he checked in what it was in the game they were playing. It was twenty something. He said something along the lines about being able to murder footballs if it was eighty five degrees or something. Like, this is Big Ten football, and he was like, "Who's who's judging? Who's making the decision on who's winning these awards and everything like that?" And I'm like, "Hey, Tori, preach, dude. Yeah. I love everything you're about right now, pal. I love taking a shot just at awards and." committees that we know nothing about i do it every day especially when he is legit like you look at his stats like they back up how good he is he's a very very important part of that team who was ranked you know number three or number two like four weeks ago yeah there's been a couple guys you, you go like the stout kid in penn state he's a stud kicker and a punter ariza in san diego state he's a kicker and he's a punter and tory taylor was winning games i feel like that's a pretty easy i feel like that's a pretty easy thing but I didn't watch all the film. I didn't even fucking know Michigan was good. And I did not know Ohio State. Had, is that the guy that started this season where everybody's saying bench him? He's not good enough? Yep, that's him. He's now a Heisman? Yeah, yeah the favorite. favorite. All right, good for him, man. What are you yeah, is he officially the favorite now? Yeah, he's minus 220, which is. Wow. Because at the beginning Damn. of the year, he was missing everybody. He mm -hmm. wasn't the right guy. This guy isn't the Ohio State guy that we need or whatever, right? And then they just kind of flipped the switch after that Oregon game. Is that what happened? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was right after that game, but he's been looking pretty legit as of late. How old is he? Freshman? I think he's redshirt red freshman. freshman. I think. Wow. Well, do, do they redshirt anymore? There's no real redshirts. Yeah, because you can play four games, five games, and in the COVID year, you can slide in there. And yeah. if he's good, like he's not gonna stay around. Like, what, there's... We talked about this about Arch Manning. What if Arch Manning just tests out of whatever academy he's in and he starts for Texas next year? Can Ooh. that happen? Is he? Because what is he a junior? Yeah. Yeah. So could he test out and start for Texas next year? He goes to an academy. We assume that Arch Manning is a businessman as well. Would you be able to make that happen? Yeah, same thing as Quinn Ewers yeah, this Quinn year Ewers. for Ohio State. Could he have played? Could Quinn Ewers have yes. played yeah, this year? Yeah, he's dressed. He's on the sidelines. He's dressed. Uh, was there ever a time where he was going to play? I, I don't think they ever said that there there was, so I have no idea why Man. he – you Came so early too. Well, what does talking, he do now, though? They're he's talking about him transferring right now. Oh, he's going to transfer. He's going to hit the transfer portal. Oh, no. I, I, oh just no, he's not he's, even eighteen yet. If this guy wins the Heisman, and I think I, the thing I read was saying like how a lot of his like NIL de uh, deals are predicated on like him playing, and like you know, <laughs> oh, people, they're not just going to give no. this guy two million bucks to sit his ass on the bench. Well, and by the way, if I'm Quinn Ewers, I'm not sitting on the bench for right. True, three or four years either. JB will be pissed off about this, but it's, <laughs> like, hey, it is. You know, what do you do? That's a weird. I mean, they may have a couple guys. Like they probably have all their quarterbacks are probably four and five star dudes, and then all of a sudden this guy in his first year starting might win the Heisman. Like, okay, that, now what? So I got at least three years of sitting. Yeah. Like Unless he gets hurt, right? There's always injuries that happen. No, don't want it to. Hey, yeah. don't want it to. At all. But it's gonna. Ha it's potentially yeah. could happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe go to Iowa. Oh, maybe go to West oh, Virginia. Wow. Ooh. That's what Iowa should do is try to you know recruit. Guys like that. Ferris just doesn't do that kind of stuff. Man, that's not what Kirk's dogs do. No. Nah. Kirk's dogs don't. Kirk's dogs ain't doing that. They ain't never come. Michigan State will come after guys. I promise you that. Oh, no yeah. Tucker will. Well, they nine point ninety five million dollars. Yeah. Ninety five million dollars. Yeah. Hey, oh, hey, hey, James Franklin too. Like, hey, Quinn, what's yeah. going on? Hey, I just got a hundred million dollar deal. Hey, come on. Lane Kiffin after Corrales this oh, year. Man. Hey, how about that kicker at Ole Miss? By the Ooh. way, <laughs> Wood. Do you see that, AJ? Mm -hmm. What do you do? Pine time. He did. I mean, he took a dude out on a long return. He, he no. smoked yesterday it. smoked a dude. It was all in the egg bowl, right? That yeah. Was the egg bowl? Mm -hmm. yep. In the egg bowl. Big time shot. I liked it a lot. He was going in to hurt. I appreciated that. It wasn't like, oh, I'm scared to go in there. He, it, no, granted, I think he had pretty good, you know, pretty good size. Yeah. But he fucking laid somebody out yesterday. It was big news. I didn't watch it. 
You know, I didn't see it live, but it flooded my uh, uh, my timeline. My I got no service on my phone at my house that I moved into. So I mean, it's hard to see. It's hard to see a lot of things. And there's I don't know, 17 people in my house right now trying to figure out the internet. They ain't gonna be able to. I <laughs> I know this is gonna work or whatever. But I saw that a couple times from a lot of people. They're like, "Hey, can you please give this dude a shout out?" It's like, "Yeah, fucking right." I mean, that dude tried to. You know, you look like AJ Hawk out there. Yeah. Did the returner see him? I don't think so. No, I think it was. Either awesome. way, that's awesome. It's I dude. love it. I love it too. I enjoy it a lot. That juices a team up. Like that can get it. That can turn a team around. Well, not just because it's not supposed to happen, right? So anything that's not supposed to happen that happens is like a wake up, like a refresher almost. Yeah, he fucking. I mean, here it is. Uh, we can't play it obviously, but eye to eye there quickly for Ooh. about a yard and a half. And I want to let you know the kicker was not looking to just hug. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no, no he, he was, and I appreciate that. I like that a lot because a lot of kickers. You know, they make the excuse like they shouldn't because they might get hurt or whatever. It's like you might get hurt. Like you might yeah. you might get hurt getting run over too if you don't you know what I mean, AJ? Yeah. I never I mean, you could you could tear your ACL whiffing him trying to break down and make <laughs> yeah. the tackle. I wonder why that happens. I've never really asked, you know, because I try to stay away from that talking point with people that I don't have a lot of respect for how they tackle, you know, or kicking things. But yeah. why I wonder why, you know? Why what? Like why don't you go? Like you're setting yourself up to get hurt if you don't go, I think. Like on a football field. You can get got on a football. I think this is why the Hauschka thing from a couple, yeah. Oh, yeah. couple years Anderson. ago when Goose mm -hmm. when Goose hit him on a blocked field goal, but Hauschka went running over to the side of the field where mm -hmm. it was. So Goose, I mean, Goose could have done a much different block to handle the situation, okay? And I don't necessarily love that. And I don't love that it ended up hurting Hauschka. But, like, if you're getting in there, there's a chance you're going to get got. Like, so you have to act accordingly, I think, you know? And that's... Yeah, I, don't I think a lot of those, some of them, I'm sure kickers and punters, they're probably not used to making a lot of tackles. So it's a it's a unique situation. It's not like you ever, in your time in the NFL or college, did you ever practice live tackling when no. you were playing? So I was in an Oklahoma drill once, I think, or twice in college. It was awesome. Well, yeah, Rich Rod was your coach, right? Yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> it was awesome. They put me in there one time. I shed a block, by the way, of course. I believe it. It was against a corner, though. Still. I was like 240. They put me against a corner or whatever. Eh, not very fair for old buddy. But I did do a little pew, pew. Went the wrong way though. Guy scored. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> guy, guy, guy scored the other way. So it was a it was a special teams Oklahoma drill. So it was uh, like uh, you know what I mean. Yeah. It's probably smart to shed the wrong way because that that running back probably had about five yards running downhill. You shed yeah. such an unfair drill. You shed a block and just catch a guy right in your face as he runs you completely over. Hey, that's linebacker drill, isn't it? Aren't you guys the big shed in the push and the chop? The yeah. that's like oh, all it's great. linebacker it's great stuff. Great for D line linebackers. That drill is for sure. How do you do? You just have to learn how to move your feet back and have your body weight forward so you don't get got whenever you're doing that. Or how's that happen? I mean, you got to have a good you got to have a good cobra strike off the line. You got to have a perfect <laughs> amount of space to where you can hat and hands that dude, and then you can get your arms extended and you got to throw off and like stay low because you're right. Wherever I throw off, that running back is right there because the drill is set up for the running back to win. So you got to find a way to not get killed. So you got a headbutt first person, shed, now you're coming in, <laughs> cobra yeah. strike to the running back before the bodies even making each other. That's why they're changing the game. That's why the game sucks. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's, uh -huh. That's why the game sucks. But so, I don't know how more injuries don't happen. Like Darren Waller's tackle yesterday where his leg got rolled up and his ankle got twisted. Mm -hmm. How does that not happen? Guys are running 20 miles an hour, and there's so many violent collisions. I don't know how somebody – friendly got, fire? Was it a Perryman, the linebacker? I saw it in, live when it happened. He had friendly fire came and hit him. I think nice his neck up. I thought mm -hmm. it was his head at first. Yeah, it was, was the end of the game. It looked like it hurt. Different one. Oh, yeah. The, or was the ankle – was that the one or the no, head one? He, yeah, he hit his head. The Waller one is when he got tackled from behind in his knee. Yeah, uh, it was like, like was his ankle like got twisted. I think yeah. it did something to his knee. I don't know how that doesn't happen every single time. I guess you guys just have to learn how to fall. That's probably a big part of it. And is that why Absolutely. is that why whenever they yell at practice, like nobody on the fucking ground, like guys will get cut if they end up on the ground. If you're a rookie and can't learn how to practice and you're on the ground or something, they will cut you before they let you try to figure out how not to maybe blow out knees and ankles of people that are starters on the team. Well, think about it. That's like when, when those injuries happen, especially in practice, you have 22 guys out there. If someone's on the ground, like you could take out eight guys as the, if you're like in the in the line of where the play is and i'm engaged with the blocker and some dudes on the ground next to me in a drill that we're supposed to be in thud and not even full speed yeah like you may you may unnecessary and get somebody hurt for no reason let's talk about uh the injury that happened in the bill saints game although the bills blew him up tredavious white is a big loss yeah, oh huge. yeah massive that's a big deal for the bills now i don't want us to nitpick because they won 31 to 6 yep 
31 to 6. Someone nitpick. It wasn't beautiful, though. It wasn't like perfect football no. by them, you know? Josh threw a couple of picks, deflected, whatever. You got it. 31 6 win on a short week, especially on Thanksgiving in New Orleans, which is New Orleans, even though Simeon's playing. They got to feel good about this. And now the question calls. Why are the Bills the Bills some days, and why are the Bills not on other days? And honestly, for that Colts-Bills game, after watching Hard Knocks the other night, which is fucking awesome again, and it might be because I'm just a Colts fan, but they're covering, like, Jonathan Taylor, DeForest Buckner, like, T.Y.'s in there, Frank Reich is in there. Darius. It's, it, uh, yeah, Darius Leonard's in there. It's a lot of the players that we know, as opposed to the training camp Hard Knocks that is, like, trying to tell good stories, which I can respect if somebody makes it. But as a Colts fan, and as somebody that is... So intrigued to learn more about this fucking guy, Jonathan Taylor, who might be, hey, this might be the next one more. Yeah. This literally might be. But listening to the Colts speak about that game going to Buffalo and Bubba Ventrone, good Yinzer, special teams legend for the Steelers and the Patriots, oh, I yeah. believe. He's their special teams coordinator. It seems like each week he's predicting something that's going to happen on there. I, I just think the Colts expected to do what they did to the Bills. I wonder if the Bills thought the same thing and that loss wasn't that startling for them. They said, we still got to get better and move forward, which I guess they were able to do against the Saints last night. They got, I mean, the Bills need to feel good offensively, I feel like. The Saints' defense is still very good. And with what Diggs is able to do and his one-on-one -on -one matchups all the time and seem to win a good majority of them, I think their offense you know, built some confidence in our guy. How many touchdowns does Knox have now? Oh yeah, he came across the front. Yeah, hey, that yeah, was two more tied for the league lead with yeah. Hunter Henry. Hey, that one, that one, he came across the the middle, a little mm -hmm. drag route. I seem, mm -hmm. I feel like, and then Josh hit him like with a perfect stride. But nobody will talk about the where he hit him with that ball. If he hits him back here just a little bit, he probably doesn't have enough to turn and make it because there's two people there. He hits him right in stride, basically mm -hmm. turns him in there. That's a great connection, Josh and yeah. Knox. Yeah, Josh and Knox had a great connection. Diggs too. Him and Diggs, so I mean, good. That team changed completely when Diggs got there. Yeah, and to your point about their defense, like obviously last week they got eviscerated by Jonathan Taylor, and they couldn't run the ball at all last night, and they didn't really try anything with Taysom Hill because of his foot too. Yeah, what's going on with Taysom Hill? What is going on with Taysom? It makes Hill? no sense. The, the whole situ situation feels bizarre to me. Yeah. yeah, the deal and the thing yeah. and this thing and how Simeon looks on sometimes you're like. It's got to be better than that. And then they're like, well, he's hurt. And then this timing of the sign, I don't know. It's just it, – because they ran like three powers with him at quarterback last week. Yeah. Three, four powers. And I was like, hey, all right. Isn't there more you could potentially do with him? But Sean Payton has something, I guess. What are they going to do with the quarterback position? Yeah. They're, they're going to try to get a vet, huh? They're going to try Russ. to get a vet. Russ. Oh, oh, after Russ. Russ, that makes sense. Maybe Watson. I mean – I promise you Sean would come after A-Rod if he felt like A-Rod well, was available. Yeah, that's what I was just uh, kind of side-eyeing all the time there. It might be uh, old footman himself. Old footman himself. Aaron, Aaron turning his profile picture, his avatar on Twitter, into that photo from the press conference is the best thing I've seen from a MVP in a long time. Like a sitting MVP of the NFL, the biggest league on earth, just using that as his profile picture. Oh, he's a fucking fool. Yeah. Can you tell he's he's frustrated by the whole situation? <laughs> 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 I feel like he's laughing. He has to be just having the time of his life. Wall Street Journal. Yeah. Oh, Wall man. Wall Street Journal. They reach out for a uh, comment from me after, you know. After. What, what would you comment? Uh, no comment. I didn't. Really no, no comment. Okay. <laughs> response. Same response to everybody that, uh, you know, asked me to go on those primetime political shows. Oh, sure. sure. Oh, that would have been fun. Though. I got asked from every single channel, by the way, <laughs> yeah. to come on. You Not just one Carlson? side or the other side. I was asked by both sides, basically. Hey, you want to come on and talk about the Aaron interview? And it was like, uh, all sure. right, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and delete this <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so I don't get too high and respond, you know? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, what's on? What's on? This will be fun. Let me go ahead. You just said Gumby on. Both sides would have shredded me apart. I would have got shredded. <laughs> Sending someone on would have been hysterical. Oh, Paddlebags, maybe. Oh. <laughs> Anyways, to all those who asked for me to come on, I do appreciate it, but uh, I had to save me for me in that situation. I should not. Imagine me sitting there in a tank top. And they got me in a panel across. Yeah. I think you'd be great. <laughs> Glasses. What do you think he meant when he said immunized? We'll start with you. 
Rhodes Scholar. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to Judge Blah Blah Blah, yeah. who has called seven thousand different cases. And then, last but not least, the man he spoke to. Like what? Yeah. I, there's no way. There's no way I should be. I think you should do it at some point. Let me lead off with saying I've uh, actually never read a book in my life, but I am part of a book club, by the way. Shout out. Shout Shout out. out. Also, I'm very high right now. Uh, Uh, Rather high right now. I'm in Denver. You guys say Indianapolis, make sure it does say Denver. (laughs) Speaking of, how come you guys haven't got weed legalized yet? Is that your side or the other side? Imagine if that's what it becomes. Uh, I can't do it. I have have too short of an attention span, I think, to get into that whole world because every question they would ask me i would say well let's talk about the yeah no we don't want to talk about that we don't want to talk about <laughs> the that way right you now. delivered that question though makes it sound like you want me to say blah 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 right <laughs> and then it would be like a whole whole thing the <laughs> clips uh maybe maybe just one show one time no, no. i shouldn't get they're gonna bury me boys this ain't a good for me so <laughs> and then you spin it right back on them no, no, boys. You show up on Dr. Phil dressed like Dr. Phil. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> With the, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Oh, my God. Could you imagine? Oh. <laughs> Maybe Oprah in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the Rose Garden. Yes. Mm-hmm. Have Oprah, you know, my comeback story after getting dunked on by all political parties, even ones you didn't even know existed. <laughs> do you do a Dr. Phil impression? I do not, know. Oh, I don't. I no, there's a famous clip of Dr. Phil who invited some guy on. I yeah, the guy who, who invented bum fights came on Dr. <laughs> Phil and dressed, dressed as Dr. Yeah, shaved Phil. his head. Oh, I don't know how I missed that. that sounds amazing. Yeah. It was yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, a long time ago. It was a long time ago. It's an all time really. Long time ago. All right, uh, let's get to a break, huh? I got to run to the bathroom. I got some gobble goal coming. Hell yeah. <laughs> How long did you talk to Ariel for? I am looking forward to listening to this on my flight to uh, Green Bur- Greensboro. Greensboro. Mm-hmm. Greensboro today. Uh, I was uh, a little over an hour, I think. Nice. I can't wait to listen. I uh, got out of my house this morning, drove, you know, go down, turn down the road, get a text from Michael Cole saying he uh, he hopes my Thanksgiving was great and can't wait to see me later. <laughs> I said, oh shit. I gotta turn back around here. I got smacked. Up. <laughs> yeah. I had to go back. I had to go back to the house. Uh, yeah. It does feel weird. Yesterday oh. felt like Friday, dude. Uh-huh. I had no idea. Literally, it wasn't until that point I was like, "Oh my god, Smackdown!" Today. Yeah. See, I thought it felt like Sunday yesterday, and today felt like Monday. Really? Yeah. I don't know, cause Wednesday felt like Friday. Yeah. Yeah. So that would which, be which right would on make, par with yeah. It. Thanks, Hawk. No, that would be today would be Sunday. Today would be Sunday. Sunday. Okay. COVID. Days these days. Wow. <laughs> it all just kind of blends together, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it does. All right. We'll see you guys on the other side with uh, hashtag suck PMS segment that suck. we launched into the interwebs this morning and got some incredibly hilarious responses. We'll see you in four minutes. AJ, you look fantastic. Happy Gabagool, pal. Oh, no. Oh. Uh. a lot of people for the way that they acted after that Friday thing. Do you, there's no way you're isolated enough that you don't hear any, you you had to have heard. There's some massive names, politicians. I mean, your name has been spoke by a lot of people. Are you just, because you're like, hey, love will cure this thing. How are you not going to hold a grudge everybody? And do you know that you're probably never going to win an MVP again? That's probably never going to happen, right? I think that's that's a legitimate, <laughs> legitimate statement. <laughs> <laughs> Legit though, like that. There's a lot of people that vote for that that I think are not faint. Like, do you? How do you isolate that? How do you stay away from that? Because you're talking about everybody on Earth talking about you. That's not getting you down at all. I don't. That's incredible mental toughness. If that's the case. Well, you know what? I think first, if you find your identi- identity, identity in yourself and you don't find your identity in the opinions of others Mm. uh, you don't need that validation and that love from other people you can get it from yourself and that's not being selfish that's just learning how to uh, in a healthy way love yourself and respect yourself um, and believe in yourself and it definitely was tested you know by some of the comments that I that I heard and so I'm human I mean you know stuff can can definitely hurt your feelings but uh, Look, I shared an opinion that is polarizing. I get it. And I misled some people about my status, which I take full responsibility of, those comments. But in the end, I have to stay true to who I am 
and what I'm about. And I stand behind the things that I said. And I, you know, have a ton of empathy for people who have been going through the worst part of this pandemic, which has affected all of us in different ways. But so many people, um, you know, like I said, with lives that were lost, lives that were forever changed. Um, and I have a ton of compassion and empathy for those people. Um, and I have tried to help out, you know, as much as I can. Yeah. Um, the, the other stuff is so out of my control and there's going to be people that don't like you and they don't, don't and, and, and hate you for things you said or might not even understand what you said or know what you said. It might just seem a, a headline and that's fine. Um, I, I believe that people are entitled to their opinion and even if it's the opinion that's unfavorable of me. But I'm going to continue to try and be the best version of me uh, moving forward and I'm excited about... Uh, getting back on the field as soon as possible. Hey, do you know uh, if offense or defense is getting introduced this week uh, in your game? And have you thought about it all, like what the reaction may be if offense is introduced and you're the last guy out? Have you thought about that? I think it is offense, and I'm excited. There's nothing like running out of that tunnel last, especially. You think it'll be different one way anyway than your normal, uh, you know, how they normally respond? I'm not, I don't know. I'm, uh, I hope not. Hope they show that on, on, on the it. network. Oh, that'll, that clip will make its way. Oh, yeah. That clip will make its way around. To walk into any hall at the moon and go, Wish you was the dead from that ledge, my friend. Jumper. We Love could cut ties with all the lies that we've been living in. And, and if you do not want to see me again, I will not be Uh-huh. How at the moon is just pianos usually? Uh, no, no, no. You wouldn't get it. Welcome back to the Pat McAfee Show. I just had a uh, little separation with uh, some of the food from yesterday. Another one. Okay. Hell yeah. Clean out the system. You look five pounds lighter. Hey, well, that's what I was about to say. Maybe six. Uh-huh. <laughs> hey, today's show is presented by Serial One e-bikes. Ooh. Hell yeah. Serial <laughs> One combines the fun and freedom of a bicycle with the effortless joy of electric power to make you feel... Like a kid again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Serial One e-bikes are fast, what? sleek, what? smart, what? clean. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. We have two here in the office already, and they've been working on getting AJ his bike as well. Oh. boy, AJ. Oh, you're going to love this thing. And uh, But today is uh, Feel Good Friday. It is. Oh, yeah. So Serial One asked me to announce that... Uh, They'll be giving away a Serial One e-bike wow. uh, Whoa, let's go. within the next week. Okay. okay. Stay tuned for a giveaway. And also, all the boys in here are getting a Serial One e-bike. Oh, wow. You get one, AJ. You get one, Tone. What? You get one, Connor. Yeah. You get one, Ty. What? Everybody, everybody gets one. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And they're giving away one or two. We'll probably talk to two if everybody's getting one. We can probably yeah. throw in the next That's two. That's incredible. To give away in the next week. Shout out to Serial One e-bikes. But from now until Monday, every bike is $1,000 off. Wow. Damn. At S-E-R-I-A-L, the number one, dot com. They only do discounts once a year. Okay. So this is the time to change the way you move. They have flexible financing options with no hidden fees available. Go get this incredible Serial One e-bike. Get it now if you're... You know, in a warm city, get it now for next spring. Yeah, 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 yeah. smart. I rode it. Uh, I've been riding mine around in the morning at the new uh, house where I'm at. It's really nice because I can work out because it is like a bike. But then when I get too tired, I just go ahead and turn it, some bitch up to the electric thing. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Ooh. 
rat mode. And I'm just kind of, it's just taking me home. It is awesome. It's amazing. I love it. Well, so you could, isn't it there for so, like, let's say you're trying to do like a big long trail ride or whatever, and you realize, oh man, I just pedaled 30 miles out. I need some help getting home. Bam, you just hit the accelerator. Now, 30 miles might not be, I don't know if it goes 60. I think it does go 50 some, yep. though, 51, <laughs> maybe 58, depending upon how it is. But yeah, not just a trail ride, but a lot of people use it to get to work, get around cities, to get to and from for exercise purposes, which is what I'm using an e bike for, which is pretty hilarious to think about. <laughs> Um, yeah, I get a little bit too tired. Yeah. I say, hey, I need a little tag team part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It has different levels, too, of help. You, you go know? up some big time hill. You know, I don't yeah. got it in me today. You know, you just yeah. beep, beep. Well, hey, and didn't Diggs rollerblade to work? Yeah, once. Yeah. Oh, twice. <laughs> just once. Good run. Twice. Well, no, you got here and then got home, right? Or did you come twice and then go home twice? I know. No, you, I, you, I know. <laughs> you came twice, went home once. Yeah. <laughs> Blade's still here. Yes. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> hey, that's shin muscles. Ooh. When you step into some of those blades, like I have some friends now that are taking their kids ice skating and they haven't been ice skating since we had ice skating, like $5 Friday free open oh. skate Fridays. Mm. And a great day, great time. Everybody, for, I mean, those were good days. Some people strap it up. They used to fly around on those $5 open skates, you know, and they used to spray some people, you know, maybe skate backwards, do the thing. Maybe oh, yeah. they were the talk of the town, talk of the ice. Sure. They strap in those things now. They're paralyzed by the amount of pain that their calves and their shins are taking. They can't even get around the ice. The kid's almost doing better than them. It's like you in the rollerblades. I mean, sometimes there's muscles you just haven't used in 30 years. Yeah, that's what I I tried to get a massage one time from, uh, it was a TB12 similar operation. Oh, pliability. Like a pliability massage, because Vinatieri had a guy that came in, and he was out of the same tree or whatever. And those massages are terrible. Grueling. They are Absolutely terrible. But Vinatieri offered it up. It was like, hey, this could help you, you know, take you to the next step or whatever. I'm like, yeah, I need to do this, you know. And I heard about other people that did it. I'm like, I need to do it. I did it one time. And the next morning, I was sore in places. I didn't know I had fucking muscles. Mm -hmm. Like he was rolling and working on all these muscles that I didn't even know I had nor needed. And I didn't even know they were up. That front outside, this one right here. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. He was balancing, I think, his elbow <laughs> on that muscle and rubbing it up and down. The next day, I couldn't even fucking move my foot. I'm like, what? I'm never doing that again. I'm never doing that again. No, you got to do it a couple times. He's making you more pliable. It's like, well, fuck pliable. I don't want it. That hurts so I'm bad. Like, but I'm soft, I think. Did you do any of that shit no. when you were playing? Well, I had a, like I was never huge like massage getting. I had I had a, I'd go like, every once in a while. I'd go in times he felt somebody that was pretty good at getting massage that actually helped me. I would. Try to get it on maybe Thursday or Friday, but never really consistent. Uh, I've had a few of those, and yet, and it's an hour of just sitting there tense, hurt like it hurts so bad. And then I'm like, okay, yeah, it should be good for me. I had the same thing though. Sometimes that makes you feel kind of sick too it, when you when they have like that super heavy work like that. And then I'd feel I'd be super sore for like two days. Like, but that after that second or third day, then you feel beautiful. I'm like, no, I never felt the. I never got the positive from what you told me. Yeah, the juice has not been worth the squeeze here. Okay, I've been sore for 48 hours, and on a 72nd hour, I realized that my body didn't feel better, but my brain did because I could finally walk (laughs) because the muscles that you made not work anymore that I didn't even know I had had come back to life, thank God. But no, you got to stick with it or whatever. I would get, you know, some flushing massages through the end of my career there, and that was something I would do. But some of those, like if Tom's getting that shit every single day, like Vinatieri, the... The the he used to get like they were in. I mean, raw ever heard of rolfing? No, what's that? It's like super like slow, super deep massage. I don't know. I've never had it. I don't want it. I'm not tough enough for it. But I think a lot of the people that are like high end, super high end athletes, they get all that. Do you think your body just gets used to it if you like do it for a week straight? I guess, but I feel like I'm a rather. Hmm. Maybe not. I feel like I'm a rather mentally tough person, and if it will help me, I'll get through it. If that makes sense, like, hey, if this is going to help me, I'll get through it. I don't know how anybody gets through the first four or five times that you have to do it. I, I honestly don't know. Unless you do it in the off season, I guess. I would have had to have done it in the off season, but I don't know if that's something I'm signing up for in the off season either. But that's why I'm not Tom Brady or Adam Vinatieri. You know, <laughs> yeah, I, I guess there is. I guess there is levels to this whole thing there. But geez, at least. well, do you think Brady has to do it like more so now too that he's getting older, so he's doing like more, much more than he was early in his career? He'd have to be right. Vinatieri would do an hour and a half, like warm up. How often? For the days he would kick, he would do an hour and a half warm up to get to the warm up. With that guy there? 
Uh, no, it would be uh, uh, Aaron Burrill, uh, Indianapolis Colts guy. The guy would come to his house like after hours, like two, three times a week or whatever. Damn. Yeah, so the amount of work that was getting done was I, like I got a chance to witness like, oh, there's a lot of commitment here, you know, and yeah. I would sit in a hot tub, jog back and forth a couple of times. So, all right, let's fucking let it eat a little bit. <laughs> well, he got you in the cold tub too, right? Yeah, he was the one that introduced me to the cold tub. He, I mean, my, my body, the way I was treating it, I mean, pre-October 20th, 2010, probably should have been in the NFL for negative five years. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? But then the, uh, the, the 27 month drug testing period, eight tests a month, that really changed some things, you know, mm -hmm. in, the, in the organs, I think, mm -hmm. and potentially the brain there. But the muscle stuff, watching what Vinatieri did, that definitely helped, but I couldn't, I wasn't tough enough to do it as much as, as, much as he does. Does Aaron do, do, he probably does all that super, he probably does some serious shit too, right? I'm sure, yeah, he gets massages and stuff. I don't, I don't know how in depth it is or how consistent it is, but. Yeah, a lot of guys usually, I know, I'm sure on your team it was the same, have like a, a weekly massage scheduled. It's usually like Thursday night or Friday night. Yeah. Monday. Well, body guru, you know, mm -hmm. when the body guru shows up. Of course. Man. This guy sweat, too. When They're wearing geese. You better watch out. <laughs> no, listen, I've seen a couple guys in geese who were body gurus get a guy in the Super Bowl who wasn't supposed to be in the Super Bowl, so... Depending upon what the geese look like. Look at the badges. Make sure they're legit badges mm -hmm. on the Super Bowl. <laughs> on the geese. This guy had a... Uh, he had a Super Bowl badge on his oh, gear. Oh, okay. Damn. Well, that's no, he did. That's, that's no. when you know. <laughs> yeah, no. did. yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's how it happens. Like that's... you don't you don't upgrade the belts in the body guru gi game. <laughs> you actually just add badges like the military. Yep. Tall. Like wait, so he had like the the same logo that the jerseys had? Uh, yeah, yeah. He yeah. earned and he, this wasn't his first Super Bowl. These two, they had been at a couple. I seen. You know what I mean? And then on the back, some championships, mm -hmm. some NBA. Is this a Letterman's probably. coat or is this a gi? No, well, kind of. That, that's what I'm saying. Well, it's well. not. The uh, combination, yeah, they don't upgrade the belts, it's always one color belt, you know, it's always going to be sure. a white belt. You're not going to be able to body guru your way to a black belt because they have they don't have the standards yet. Or mm -hmm. the test. Do these, sure. Hold on, are these guys martial artists at all? Do they train or do they just wear geese? No, they're body gurus, dude. That is their martial art, yeah. Okay, is the, these guys are very interesting to me. These guys beat up muscles to make them work better, that's yeah. right. Okay, that's what they do, they beat up muscles and ligaments to work. But better. why do they wear geese for it? Have to, uh, I think, because that's uh, makes them the most nimble and yeah. mobile mm -hmm. yeah, for the mojo. And also, geese aren't only for martial arts, dude. Yeah, I mean, learn a little bit, be cultured for half a second, dude. <laughs> Come yeah. on. Thank you guys for, for helping me become a little more cultured. My boss, uh, when I was a landscaper, he would wear a gi and he had a black belt in landscaping. So <laughs> See, sure. there it is. it's it's for people of all of all. So tell so. Coach if Coach Diggs could bring us <laughs> oh. his his gi for being the black belt of pepperoni Correct. and gobble ghoul bread. Uh -huh. We would like to hang it in the rafters. Thank you. Yeah, please. We'd like to hang it in the rafters here. Anyways, those body gurus got the white free in the game. He got a sack. All right, he wasn't supposed to play, so. Hey, results speak for themselves. In the I saw those two. I saw those two. I'm, I'm so sorry. I saw nah. those two getting on a plane <laughs> months later in the geese. And These I, guys uh, live what they preach. I literally, <laughs> yeah. I forget where it was. I was leaving somewhere. So, like, I think an event was happening where there was probably some athletes there, high-profile athletes there. And uh, the geese were on the way out with me on the same flight. And I remember shaking their hands going, I saw you guys work at the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks, man. Sorry we didn't get a win, but Freeney was back. <laughs> Whatever, there was a laugh, and then I just walked away. It was like, all right, so these guys are on brand all the time. Mm -hmm. This is a true story, too. Everything I'm saying is 100 <laughs> This is not gimmick or bit at all. I hope we can get the body guru geese in here. Yeah, right that'd be awesome. Oh, my God. Turn Anyone comment. that can wear a gi and take themselves seriously and, take, and expect other people to take them serious, they're good in my book. So maybe they wore polos for a while, but nobody fucking listened. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So they're like, I'm sick of it. We gotta switch this up. <laughs> Who wears gi? <laughs> uh, Wait, what kind of pants? Were they wearing the gi pants? Yes, like, yeah, yeah. match. Oh, no way. Blue, no they, way. I saw them in a blue one, an all blue one. Get out of here. So they just, like they just they came have different hey, jujitsu. They have different gis too. I think they had a travel gi. Oh yeah. You oh, yeah. thought Work they were gi on the top? Yeah. Fucking wranglers on, on the bottom. bottom. This Come ain't on. the mall of the gis, dude. This is the body guru. <laughs> like now though, could those guys get on a plane now? Someone might think they're terrorists or something. If they show up wearing no, a gi, they're here to save people. They let them on first. They're like, no, they're here to kill us all. No, no they fucking oh, bow save. to them yeah. and then let them pass. Right. Like a Super Bowl patch. Oh yeah. Did you bow? I think you do. But. 
think that at this point, I mean, that was so long ago. They gotta have like 13, 14 Super Bowl patches. Oh yeah. oh yeah, They might have. They might even have a piece of the Lombardi on it. Ooh, <laughs> you know what I mean? They might even have guys, I mean, I don't know if they weren't talking about it for fifteen or twenty minutes, but these guys, we need to talk to somebody. They scrubbed every photo off the internet. I cannot find a photo of these I'll guys. I'll text them. Yeah, operating silence. I think these guys are gonna get, be caught photographed. <laughs> Look up the uh, <laughs> you see me? convention. I don't. Here, I'm gonna text the. Uh, they're they're working, so they shouldn't answer me. But hey, like Chris Angel. This is the, uh, I'm a Colts, uh, the Colts trainers, because they had to deal oh. with this whole situation too, right? Oh. Because yeah. outside gi wearers wanted to come into the building that we were in, <laughs> you know? So the medical department had to answer all these questions because there was a lot of people saying, who are these people? Why are we letting them in there? Well, there's people that believe that these gi wearing men are the only answer, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. only answer. And by the way, Got a sack and a Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, where do they do they have fanny packs? Because their gi pants don't usually have pockets. How do you? Uh, I think they strap it inside. Yeah, yeah. across <laughs> the chest. You got an answer for everything. <laughs> <laughs> you got to remember. You know me as a human now. At this point, think of me walking down the hallway at the Super Bowl. That's why it's so funny to me. That's why I I continue to ask questions because I'm so intrigued. Well, Freeny, imagine Freeny sitting there, and then these two guys in geese are going, and I'm like. <laughs> What? And I'm a rookie at this point, right? And I'm still the same person I am now. Much quieter, I think. Around my people, I would speak, but normally much quieter. But I had to sit there and stare at that thing for, I, I think I watched an entire session, maybe 45 minutes, like just so <laughs> taken back. I mean, it was unbelievable. He fucking got a sack, though. I mean. Worked out? Who, yeah. who, how do you spell yeah. gi? G I. G I, G I, I believe. Yeah. G I. Who were the gi wearing dudes? Who were the gi wearing? Is your flashlight on? Yeah. Oh no. Good eye. It's off now. Good eye, dude. Thank you. Wow. I Thank turned you. on in my Hawk pocket. Guys. That'll mm -hmm. kill your battery. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'll absolutely kill your battery. What else kills your battery, Pat? Well, when you're on it all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yesterday I put the phone down, by the way. Put the phone down you know, yesterday. I FaceTimed you yesterday. Yeah, I didn't answer because I FaceTimed you two days ago. You didn't answer. <laughs> huh. So, I mean, it was like. Oh, that's, I figured, honestly, I did figure that was the case. You just stood there and stared at not, not going to do it. No, <laughs> I woke up afterwards. I woke up afterwards and I saw it and I was like, should I call him back? No, nah, I didn't answer yesterday. So then I said, <laughs> you know, he'll have a great Thanksgiving. We'll talk to him tomorrow and feel good Friday about guys wearing geese. To be honest, it was a little weird. I, uh, like when the Lions gamer was on, was on or whatever, I was like, uh, I was on Twitter. I was like, let's see what Pat thinks about what's going on in this game. Oh, nothing. Nothing. Huh. I didn't do anything. I didn't. I watched the games. I play. I gambled a little bit. I ate a lot. But you got to remember, like in my house, not a lot of service, anyways. Yeah. yeah. So what am I even? You it's know. Good, it's good to get away. Yeah. It's hell of a day. I stared at the fish. To be honest, it's hard to watch TV in that house. You got windows the size uh, of moving trucks. You just want to look outside <laughs> yeah. and look at the view the whole time. AJ. AJ, it's high society. Dude. Yeah. Big time. I'm living high society right. You now. put a picture up of like. Uh, the, the backyard, I guess, on the water looks sweet. There's no yard. That is a problem because they're dogs. Oh, yeah. It's right, it's going, is out. the water right there? Yeah, water's right there. Yeah, it's really nice. It's too nice, actually. I shouldn't be in a house that nice, but fuck it. Somebody had to buy it, so why not me? The, um, there's a fish tank that has three floors worth of shit to, mm -hmm. to fix it. That it, fish tank is awesome. Yeah. It, but if that fish tank is to break, we have no idea. What no. to do? Yeah. Do you have the guy coming over? You have to have like a company that takes care of it. Yeah, we got fish guy, and he said he'll get an update on any sensors that are potentially off. But I mean, that is, I mean, it's beautiful to look at. But there's a lot of parts of the house I look at where I don't even know how to turn the light off in that room, let alone yeah. if this whole thing was supposed to go off. It is insane. It's very much like uh, I feel like I've entered into the I can host events house oh yeah absolutely. I, it's like one of those. It's like an event hosting house. So maybe you can we rent out, rent out the backyard for weddings. So, well, well that, that there is dumb. a serene babbling brook back there that will. Oh, set the there break. is a little yeah. babbling. Were the otters there? Uh -huh. What's that? I haven't seen the otters. It's getting cold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're probably going under. They're all dead. You think they Whoa. 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 Otters, shit. second smartest little creature or whatever. Yeah. They, they don't die. Otters Who's first? It doesn't matter. Dolphins, cold, right? Really? Yeah, ants are up there. Ants are going, but ultimately, in the end, they just get stepped on. Yeah. You yeah. know? True. Bees are a good one, but they're mm -hmm. just chasing one bee for the rest of their life. They're pretty mm -hmm. uh, brainwashed. Horses. Horses are good. They're like big dogs. Exactly. Yep. But uh, allegedly the otters know how to. Oh, and the uh, orangutans. Oh, this, the list has, this list has the raven as the smartest uh, mammal. <laughs> That's the third eye. The bird? Yeah. 
Not wow, Justin. they got Justin a Raven. Tucker too. You ever see a Raven use a hand pull? Didn't think so. Yeah, that's what the otters and the uh, orangutans. The macaque monkeys and uh, <laughs> the uh, cock. Macaque. Macaque. Macaque monkeys. They have a tiered system where if you're born at this bottom tier. Don't even think about climbing up. The, no. And it's on an actual pyramid. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, like, there is parts you can't. Some little young, lower-tiered macaque yeah. kind of got off on a little bit of a power trip oh. and started climbing up the, the, the reins of not only life but just the pyramid. And all of a sudden, another macaque came over and said, oh, whoop, pff, fucking macaque. Go, go back fuck down. out of here. Macaques. No, <laughs> no American dream with the macaques. <laughs> Yeah, hey, McCock slapped him. I remember when you watched this documentary, you came in the next day, told us all about it. It's hey, awesome. the, the McCocks might get a shout-out. What's out the real us. name? I feel like this McCock is like... It's, 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 it's the real name. Look it up. It's real. I think they're in Asia, I believe. How do I spell it? McCock. M-A-C-A-Q-U-E, I believe. Oh, jeez. That's not how I was going to spell it. Wow. Uh, M-Y-C-O-C-K. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> It's not my cock, dude. It's my cock. Yeah. Cock. yeah. And I think, honestly, I kind of respect the fact that they have a pillared system. Oh, yeah. And they stick to it. And it's been passed down generations and generations and generations. No one's ever, no one's ever jumped up and killed the, the no. guy like some from the bottom? Like so there, Caesar? I, I assume there was some sort of backstabbing re revolution, and a coup, if you will. Yeah. Oh, sure. A coup in the macaques uh, was probably... Many have been attempted, but if you're at that bottom one, I don't think there's any any coup you can do to get you up a higher. Well, rate. don't the top ranking ones have like assault rifles? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it's kind of that they, <laughs> yeah. they somehow manage to get weapons, so it's tough yeah. to overthrow. Those the ruling class. definitely spatchcock a fucking turkey better than you did. Dude. Yeah, well, and the thing about the macaques, especially the higher up ones, they do they know how to use like a fork and knife. Yes. Yeah, because they've gone to. What do they look like? Cocks. They, like a monkey, yeah, but like more so macaques. Are they big like like the chimpanzees we watch that are grilling hamburgers? No, they're kind of like. Uh, by the way, the chimpanzees that do grill hamburgers are awesome, and I've made I've gone eye to eye with an orangutan named Rocky down here at the Indianapolis Zoo, and I'll tell you what, he looked me in my eyes, I looked him in his eyes, and then he pooped everywhere. He told me it was coming. You know what I mean? Like, mm. He and I had a real moment. He didn't throw it at you though, did he? No, no. He he gave me a look like I'm about to just poop right now. And then, boom, he did from like two stories up to oh, and nice. that thing. That's sweet. Went raining down. He was not happy to be in the enclosure that he was in at the oh, time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's tough. You life. think, had, would he have clapped for you if you would have pulled your pants down and taken a dump right there, too? Mm hmm. What if I do just dump? You could have made it, you could have gave him a better day. Then you become one of them, like an avatar. I see you. I feel you. Mm hmm. How about those orangutans and shit? They'll like sharpen knife, like wood and they'll like oh, yeah. use it as a weapon it's and genius. stuff. They're so smart. Yeah. But these otters, I guess the otters are really smart as well. And allegedly, I got some pet ones. Aren't they vicious creatures, aren't they? The otters? Yeah. No, nah, they like me. I, I feed them koi fish. Okay. Oh, nice. Yeah, I go to the state fairs. I put the ping pong thing into the mason jar. Uh -huh. They just feed me all these fish. You know, congrats, another winner, another yeah. winner. And then I go, hey, otter, otter, otter. And I move, throw it up, and they bat it up, and then they... Well, that's pretty awesome. In their mouth. The old house raccoons and deer dead. <laughs> no, they're still alive. They're running around a little bit more. Wow, well, right, no around. one's alive. Uh, you there. should check on that because what's that? I assume those construction workers are going to be putting butts out. Uh, uh, to, be, <laughs> to be clear, there's no construction <laughs> workers them. over there yet, and okay. I, I don't know if any construction workers will be putting butts out on it. <laughs> okay, on the deer or the raccoons, but. <laughs> Now that I'm looking back on it, I don't know how long that black mold was in my house. Those raccoons might have been breathing much better air than us inside the house. You know what I mean? I, it, it seems to be that. Like, so you really found black mold? Yeah. That became a thing. I, like, I guess, like, not going to, like, half your house for five, six years is not good. You probably don't. Like, you need to, like, flush toilets and turn on sinks and bathrooms. Really? Or something. What? I figured, like, hey, I'll just let it be. Laissez faire. You know, yeah, hey, yeah. Congrats, congrats to this part of the house. Okay? You ain't going to see me. I ain't going to see you. You know, you just kind of do your thing. I guess some things can happen up there whenever you're not paying attention. Mm -hmm. Pipes might be, you know, Burst bursting, bursting and then yeah. fungus might be growing and then you might be breathing in air that's actually killing you, you know, and you might move to another house rather quickly mm -hmm. in a lot of people's eyes and immediately you're breathing better. And it's like, oh, that place was actually potentially killing me. Yeah. Yeah. So with that being said, all the deer are alive and in good spirits. Okay. It's good, good to hear. know. Well, I mean, yeah, we have no proof of this, but yeah. <laughs> They're going to be real pissed and real hungry when you guys get back over they there. They still are really hungry. 
No, well, they're, they're animals. They're always hungry. Well, yesterday no, for, was Thanksgiving, well, yeah, they don't know they how to didn't have, you know, a full full meal. So I, mean, uh, I would imagine. No, we told them, hey, this is the last night you guys are going to be eating four-course meals. <laughs> okay. All right? So they were prepared. I think so, yeah. If only they knew how to find their own food, but by now they have no clue how to do that. Well, they're very good. They were able to find that little spot, you know, on the deck where they were able to And they're to get... still there, just sit there with their little faces looking in the window. And, they, yeah. and then these, like, Connor's guys come out and put their butts out in the face. <laughs> well, I might. I've heard some of the coyotes chirping, so hopefully they'll, <laughs> they'll just give that thing, uh, or a lot, all of them, you know, a quick painless death. Oh, you're talking about a uh, circle of life? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Just because gnaw, gnaw. guess what? You know, it's get, it's getting cold. Fruit Loops aren't there anymore. These guys, they yeah. don't want to live anymore anyway. Yeah, but they're not going to be like a tasty treat for the coyote. Coyote's going to want to go pay attention. Uh, they should have them up. I think they might have a little extra juice right, on let's, them. let's cover everything. We, they we taste have. more. They're very sweet now with all the sugar yeah. they've had. Well, okay. Well, the sh they haven't had sugar in some time, though. So like pineapple. They've all Three picked days. it out. That house is killing me, though. I didn't know. And my wife and my animals. It's right. dangerous. Very dangerous, yeah. Then the new one is gorgeous. It is yeah. too nice. We're not supposed to be there. I wonder how long it'll take until uh, I ruin it. Let's get to <laughs> some uh, storylines here from around the internet before Coach JB joins us in about 13 minutes. Hashtag sup, PMS. Mm -hmm. Sup. We uh, put that out on the internet this morning. Ty went through, picked out five questions that people on the Twitter had for us. We use your question. You'll get some merch. The boys will follow you and get your information to be able to send it to you. Let's go to the first hashtag sup, PMS tweet. This comes from JB at JB underscore F1 USA. Big Formula One fan. Yeah. Huge. Oh, yeah. Hey. Ricardo, Daniel Ricardo. Oh, yeah. of course. Oh, stud. Uh, this guy watched the documentary three times. That's wow. right. Oh. Yeah, JB loves him some Formula One. Hashtag sup, PMS. AJ Pat did traveling to an away stadium and seeing a lot of away fans pump you up more. As a Bolts fan, can't help but notice away teams with a ton <laughs> of energy with fans at SoFi. Is this a huge disadvantage for the Bolts? They should pack up and go to St. Louis. Oh. Oh. Formula One JB says, go on back to St. Louis. Get out of town. Uh, you, you, you move from San Diego, no Nobody likes you here except for the away fans. I actually enjoyed away games personally because I enjoy banter and shit talk. It also kind of gets you away from everything. It's just you kind of against the world. Now, stats will tell you that home field advantage is something, and it is real, and it is nice just to be able to go home and stay in the city the day before without having to travel. But I enjoyed away games myself. AJ, how about you? I absolutely enjoyed away games. And the coaches always tell us before you go, okay, it's just us. We don't, it's us and those guys on the sidelines now. Your, your away teams, like, I'm sure the Colts fans travel well, the Packers fans travel well, but still there's, like, a section usually of the stadium where they are. But the majority, especially if you're facing a good team, is going to be the home team. And I think when they're pumped, when the home team is crazy and their fans are yelling and they're going crazy on you, like, it juices up the away team absolutely. But the only problem is if you let them get that momentum, sometimes it's tough to get back when you're in a, a place like Seattle or Kansas City, any of the great places. Yeah, the macaque gets rolling down. Mm -hmm. oh, right. yeah. I mean, it gets rolling at a at a buzzsaw rate or whatever. And Colts fans did travel. I don't remember thinking like, oh, yeah, this is like a home game somewhere else. Packers fans, though, travel, right? Like, mm -hmm. it is. There's Big some time, places yeah. that get taken over. Same with, like, Steelers fans and Bills fans. And uh, do Patriots fans? Oh, yeah. Patriots fans as well. There's some fan bases that travel well. You were a part of that. That had to feel pretty good, I think. It was awesome, especially when you go out for warm-ups a lot of times where the home fans weren't all in there. A lot of times, though, the Packer fans that traveled, they were there. So we'd go to warm-ups sometimes. And, you know, Aaron starts – if he acknowledges some of them, then the whole place starts getting going. Like I think they've done a few – I've been to some away stadiums where they're doing the Go Pack Go chants. I forget. Um, we were playing Cincinnati night game uh, when I was at West Virginia. And I think our fans traveled really well. Like, it, it was uh, a lot of West Virginia fans. And at Cincinnati at the time, your locker room was basically, like, you could hear what was going on out there. And Rich Rod gave an entire speech about our fans have already kicked their fans' fucking asses. Listen to them out there. <laughs> and it was like some country roads was being sung Damn. before the thing or whatever. It is. It's a pretty cool thing when it's like we are all traveling and invading your city almost. You it's know? fun. It's, it does feel like, obviously, winning at home is awesome. Your home crowd, everything. But there's something about winning on the road that's all you have. So you, when you're walking to the locker room with your team, like your coaches, there, there's something special. Like there's something extra about it that I feel like, all right, yeah, we did this. This is something that they didn't think we could do. And then that flight ride home. Oh. Yep, exactly. It used to be. I don't know what it is now. I hope. Do they, let, do they yeah. let their body gurus on the plane on the wide ride home, you think? Well, that's what I'm saying. And nowadays, and I'm not going to out anybody, so I heard this happen on other teams. 
Hell yeah. The other teams I heard this happen. Mm -hmm. Like the flight attendants were the ones going and getting the shit for you. Oh, man. So that like, you know, it wasn't necessarily being checked, you know, in different ways. Because they're allowed a certain amount of liquor on each plane due to F whatever it is. Yeah. So instead of doing that, hey, maybe you could get, not at our team, obviously. This is other teams I've heard this happens. So maybe you can barter with a flight attendant. Hey, hey, we're potentially going to need, especially if the game's looking good, a couple of these, a couple of these. Is that a possible? Yeah, boom, bang, bang. How you doing? Keep it moving. I've heard that happen, too, at other places. Where, but I've also heard that there's been flight attendants that got fired because of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Well, that's why I'm saying uh, it definitely it didn't happen at the Colts because of that. But I'm saying yeah. other places I, I heard that was the case. Yeah, some people weren't on flights anymore after being on flights for like 10 years. It was like, well, what happened? Uh, Where'd go? Not at our place, obviously, at another place. Other places, yeah. Like, uh, something happened. They were, they had something. I'm like, huh? well, what did they have over there? Because I probably asked somebody to do something similar mm -hmm. here on this team. Not Trying that it was our team. 15 bottles of Grey Goose onto the plane, unfortunately. Oh, my God. Was it the cartoon-sized ones or the little ones? Because <laughs> if you get the cartoon-sized ones, you only need one of those things to kind of slip in. But if it's the little ones, you need a lot of them. And yeah. They kind of rattle. <laughs> you know, just something to think about. Hey, ask me if you want any help on your team, by the way, not our team. Yes. Because mm -hmm. you can wrap, like, you know, um, warm-ups in oh, a good way. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Get that all, you know. Figured out. On other teams, I've heard. They used to put, I, I think I've told you, Back in the day, they used to put three beers on each seat, like in a little brown paper bag for everyone. I heard those days were awesome, by the way. I heard those were the days that, not on the Colts, but on other teams, I've heard, legitimately in this one. Like, people go around with, like, painkillers almost. Like, it, that's like the legendary story. Is like, okay, hey, they like, walk down the aisle, hey, what do you need? What do you And they're like, throwing paint. I can't imagine. I, yeah, that, people say that definitely happened. People did say, I've never witnessed it, but people yeah. said that that used to happen at some point in the NFL. It was like, <laughs> hey, you need one? Boom. Who needs it? You need a muscle? Boom. Right there. Yo, bang. <laughs> Who's buying Hey, something? what do you got? An ankle? Ah, here's something for your whole fucking body. Boom, bang. Yeah, I heard that's what it used to be like. I never experienced that. Legit. No, shoot. I definitely didn't experience that. Me neither. But I, I, I was like, God damn, there had to be people just collecting those. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's insane. See, let me put a couple in here. And you watch something like Dope Sick, and it's like, oh boy. Be oh, that's, careful. Yeah, that was happening all over the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we could get into it, and we're the people that should, but <laughs> Big Pharma. <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> Uh, let's talk about some things here before Coach JB gets on and uh, talks about college football rivalry weekend. I can't wait for it. Mike McCarthy and Jerry Jones's reactions to the 28 penalty, 276 yards in penalty affair that was yesterday's Thanksgiving game are fantastic. Let's run through uh, Jerry Jones first, Evan Fox, and then we'll get to big Mike McCarthy chatting about the game that was in which they lost to the Raiders by a game-winning field goal. We actually shut out game plan before the game and really thought that this crew has huge penalties and we thought this would be a high penalty game we thought this and so we anticipated that to their credit uh, i think uh, they just did a real good job of getting their big plays and a bunch of more penalties so we listen big mike and i we talked and he fucking said these guys throw a lot of flags and we loved that that was going to happen. We were ready for it, but we did not anticipate being on the fucking wrong end of a couple of big ones. He's basically what Jerry Jones just said. That is real, though. And if Big Mike and Jerry are talking every single week, like it sounds like they are, and there's other teams, I guess, that this happens with the ownership, we just don't hear about it as much. The referees being scouted is a real thing, AJ. Now, the question is, where is Sean Hockley's crew next week? How many flags does he throw, and how much overkill are both teams going to have to like, try to tell their team, listen, they call everything. We're not doing anything. We're playing two-hand touch, basically. Now. There's full meetings happening this week. By, and not just this week, the next week and the week after that and the week after that about this Hockey League crew. Because they'll even give averages on the amount of flags. How about they call this more than anybody else? Some some uh, crews, like offensive holding on the offensive line, a lot of them. Like, hey, there's, an, uh, there's, a, a, defense, there's a former defensive lineman that is refing on this crew that calls more offensive holding. So all the offensive linemen all week are like, hey, look out for it, look out for it. You don't find out until I think like Thursday or Friday or whatever the case. But I think Hockey League's crew, Sean's, all year have been heels. The stats say that the away team will benefit a lot more than the home team from Sean Hockey League. The home team coach, Big Mike McCarthy, who AJ knows a lot about, got asked about the game and why they lost to Rich Besaccia in the Raiders via a game-winning field goal. This is what Big Mike had to say. 
Uh, 28 penalties. I, I really, I mean, what, I don't know what the hell you want me to say. I mean, so <laughs> right what you want, I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> Right, what you want? I'm all for it, man. I don't, what the fuck do you want from me? 28 penalties. We didn't even play football out there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, do, what do you even want? That's real, though. Coaches, you know, legacies get tarnished and fired, and people lose jobs because of bad officiating. And I feel like we are one of the only programs that are going that aren't scared to say it because we have no affiliation to the league or to any refs or anything. They stink. They, they need to learn. We need to make them better, AJ. We need to make it better. If it's full-time, let's fucking go. If it's a better pipeline to make maybe former players get in there, because a lot of former players don't know what their identity is post-football either. If there was a way, like an academy, for them to go to and get certified and adding technology, there just has to be some sort of answer so we can stop talking about this every single day after games end, AJ. Well, you had, like for anything, you have to be held accountable for whatever you, you're doing. And they are, I guess, they're graded, and they say they go over the film, whenever. I guess what would be interesting to see, and they rate these crews, too, on how, like, who's top crews, who's not. Where is Hockley's crew rated? Like, does the NFL, do the, does the, the head of the refs, do they think that this crew is doing a good job? Remember, we, we fixed the regular world, right? Remember, we oh, uh, yeah. fixed politics mm -hmm. in the real world because we've been thrusted into it a couple times, whether it's because of conversations we've had here or sports mixes with the real world or whatever. And the way to answer and beat this thing is we need a scoreboard, right? We just Boom. need a scoreboard so then we can see who did better and then we can trust accordingly. For instance, if the Detroit Lions of Congress come out and say something, <laughs> the rest of the world that doesn't pay close enough attention can at least go look up scores and say, oh, this is the fucking Detroit Lions. Mm -hmm. Their opinion means nothing. Like that in the real world is something that's needed. Now, who's going to decide what a score is? Who's going to run the scoreboard? They, You smarter people can figure that out. But I think that would, just like with the refs, though, we should see the rankings that the NFL puts together. We should see the scores that are given, and then we could say, hey, this crew stinks. The NFL knows they stink. Let's act accordingly and maybe add more tech to help that particular crew or to maybe this really good crew. Okay, all the primetime games, we're going to put this crew on. And by the way, if you don't like it, other crews, fucking do better and you can become the primetime games that all the eyes are going to be on for our league, for our sport, people that aren't normally NFL fans that are gathered around with families on Thanksgiving watching alongside football fans. Watch that game yesterday and was like, who can watch this shit? There was numerous times where it was a flag on five straight plays, including yeah. like a special teams play, which is always so long and drawn out, let alone how that thing ended. False start, offsides, move back up. Now the Cowboys did that. They, they jumped offsides and the refs are gonna have to call what they're gonna have to call. But I think that was a perfect cherry on top of a game that was just a clusterfuck because of the officiating. And I think, you know, they broke a record, so congratulations yeah, to Sean. Right. Sean did something Ed could never do mm -hmm. in the last 18 years, which is 14 penalties on both teams. Hey, we're stern but fair on everybody. Over uh, 300 yards and penalties. It's just, it's absurd. It's insane, AJ. I, I agree, and it's not, but it's not going to get any better. Isn't this every single week that it, we continue <sighs> to see these things? And it's not getting better. It seems like as of now, it's, I don't know if there's more attention on it or what, but it's probably getting worse. And I'm a big, I'm a big Hey, that, that's reality. And then, hey, there's, you know, fantasy land. I feel like we talk about that a lot. Like, yes. hey, we want all of this to happen, but we need to address in a world in which we live that this is the reality. It can happen in many different occasions, right? It can happen in something that is very serious to the world where we're like, hey, we wish that this happened, but the reality is this actually happened. So we cannot act as if what we're wishing to happen is actual reality because those aren't the same thing. With the officiating, it's just, we can wish that they'll get better. We can wish and live in a, that technology would be able to help. But the reality is these, they stink, it seems like. And that's just going to be have to, something we have to deal with. Well, and in terms of accountability, like, yeah, they'll take it on the shins during the week. But isn't, like, the, the biggest drawback or the most they could get punished is, like, you don't get a playoff game or you don't get, to, you know, official in the playoffs? Like, these guys are still working 17, 18 weeks, whether or not, that like, they can affect – plenty of games and then at the end of the year it's like okay well you guys did stink so you're not going to get a playoff spot but they're still like they're still out there officiating every single week no matter what yeah and what if week 17 or week 18 is a game depending upon who's going to make the playoffs like oh they're not good enough to ref in the playoffs mm -hmm. but they are good enough to fuck somebody out of it yeah. right ah 
It's wild, AJ. What if they had three crews, three extra crews that are, are hanging out, and the three bottom crews every week get replaced, and they don't get to do the next week's game? Oh, so it's like a 53-man roster. Like, hey, you might get activated from the practice squad if you have a good week of practice and somebody else stinks. Maybe we'll give you a shot up here. And make sure you don't stink so you don't fall in that bottom three crews because you want to continue to work because you want to get paid when you're doing games. You think the NFL just wants us to bitch about the refs so we don't talk about other stuff? Probably. Yeah, we're yeah. not talking about Gruden. We're not talking about anything. Yeah, look over here. We're not talking about the St. Louis lawsuit, $790 million. Yeah. We're not That's talking a great about point. Honestly, a great point you bring up. Well, I just thought of it because I'm like, why hasn't this been classic, fixed? Classic misdirection. Yeah. Hmm. Chris Angel-like. Joining us yeah. now Couple is a man who... Would never look you over here so I can hit no. you over here. No. Uh -uh. Nope. Tells it like it is. Stern but fair. He joins us every single week to chit-chat about the non-caring assholes of America. <laughs> College football season in slate. Got famous on Netflix's last chance. You, he's a champion JUCO coach straight out of Compton. Ladies and gentlemen, Coach Jason Brown. Yeah. What up, what up? You got me, Pat? Yeah, you look great. How's Hey, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Gabagool. Hey, happy Thanksgiving, brother. How you guys doing? How was the eat? How was the festivities? Did you... Uh, it was I good, man. Yeah. It was good. I fried a turkey. I, I, I did the whatever, the pop cock, whatever bullshit they call it. I did that one. Uh, I, one. Dang, I don't know which one's better, man. I had to have like a taste off. They're both pretty good. I cook my shit, AJ. I fry my turkey with uh, crab boil. Ooh. So I put the inside of it. So I season it like Cajun style. Then I put a crab boil bag inside the inside the turkey. I put it in foil so when it explodes, the beads don't go all over the meat. But it uh it, it every year I seem to get better at it. But oh, the, the, uh. the smoked turkey came out pretty fucking good too. Uh, what's your favorite side out there? You you uh stuffing? stuffing? I make my own famous JB sweet potatoes, man. Oh Ooh. yeah. Brown sugar and sweet potatoes, and my brown sugar honey ham are, are my two. Oh, damn. oh hey, you know, it sounds food. like a feast. We need to get over there one time to experience yeah, man, Chef Jim. I got enough food to feed the fucking everybody. I'm gonna go out here today. Seriously though, what I do every year, man, because I'm here pretty much by myself, man. Me and the and the slap dick dogs. <laughs> I go up the street here, man, and uh, I give out shitload of plates, man, to all the homeless out here on the street. Every hey, year. let's go. Yeah, yeah, man, but you know, I don't record it and put it out <laughs> and all that old bullshit. So people, you know, you know, work in silence, man. It goes rewarded a longer time. It gets rewarded better, man. I was, uh, I mean, we could start there, I guess, but like the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award and then like the Salute to Service Award, you know, they're like, hey, we want to give you an award for what you did for the military. Or, hey, you're up for the Walter Payton Man of the Year thing. And it's like, well, then that kind of is indicating that I'm only doing this for an award when that's not the case. I'm actually trying to do the fulfillment of this whole thing. I don't know how to feel. But then they tell you, well, when others see what you do, they potentially get um, uh, motivated to do the same. So we would like to promote what you're doing so that maybe we can allow other people to feel as if they can do the same. And I was like, I guess that's a good argument. But it did always feel weird. You know, JB, it always felt weird. Like you say, Pat, shit, it's like we don't want to be the commercialized cat. Let that shit stay with the other cats. I, I don't want to do the commercialized shit, man. I'd rather do it on the low and, and, and shit. See the act, see the reaction so it doesn't look fake, man. You well, know? well, and also, I mean, if you do got a little food poisoning and that mac and cheese, you, you know, nobody's have to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> and then they don't know JB's trying to fucking poison the home. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about a little college football here. We're so thankful you joined us, JB. It's great. You know what? Thanksgiving yesterday, I'm thankful I get a chance to chat with you every single week. We get a chance to oh, chat man. with you. Same here, brother. Appreciate you guys, man. Hey, I rivalry. All week. It's funny. Yeah, rivalry week right now, JB, in the college game, in the college rivalry world. Rivalry week, man, no doubt. How about, how about Boise State's dragging San Diego State right now? Ooh. Um, I forgot there's so many games on. It's rivalry week, man, but, you know, see – just real quick off topic, speaking about my rivalries on the West Coast here, USC UCLA used to be the kickoff to Thanksgiving, used to be the kickoff to holidays out here in Cali, man. My dad, back when I was young, it used to be like a fucking bar mitzvah, man, like a huge barbecue, fucking drink, everything. People come over nowadays it used to be in prime time. Last week, SC played UCLA game, man. First of all, it was the worst USC UCLA game I've ever been a part of 45 years I've ever seen. <laughs> 
first of all, I know there's COVID restrictions on getting in the Coliseum, but still, if those two teams are good, I'm, I'm hard pressed to find that they wouldn't have shown. So you got a half empty Coliseum, which is the largest stadium in the country, I believe still holds what 110 or whatever, but you, you got 30,000 there for a fucking SC UCLA game, which is supposed to be one of the biggest rivalries of the, of the country for a long time. It was now it's just, it's a shit show. And then UCLA who's very average, the best drags SC by fucking 50 or whatever. (laughs) And and it's like, Holy shit, man. Uh, That started the rivalry weekend, I guess last week, this week you got games that are kind of, I guess meaningful for alumni and the and the boosters, but for, to us out here, you know, Georgia Tech, Georgia. I mean, fuck, Georgia's favored by thirty five. I mean, that's not really a. I, I don't know. Rivalries to me is something different, man. I mean, people always talk about Red Sox and the Yankees. I'm like, well, dude, it was never a rivalry to me until Boston finally beat them. Oh, yeah. Like, well, it's not a rivalry unless you fucking win some of them, but. Um, you know, you got the Ohio State Michigan game, which is relevant finally for a wh- first time in a while. Um, there you go. You know, you got North Carolina, North Carolina State, which is going to kick off here in a few hours. Um, so it's hard to kind of pick. You know, I only wanted to go with the relevant games that are meaningful, kind of helping out uh, towards the BCS playoff game. So there I'm going to go with like the major ones here. Okay. Uh, but I do love my Carolinians, man. I'm going to go the North Carolina NC State game. NC State's favored by six. I'm going to pick the. Uh, Michael Jordan, uh, blue baby blue North Carolina team on that one. Tar Heels, uh, Tar Heels, uh, to Let's get go. that one. Mac Brown, They're minus six um, Heels, yeah. Matt, quarterback of stud, plus six. You got Ohio out. State, Michigan, obviously, the big one. Um, Ohio State's favored by eight on the last thing I'm looking at here. Um, I'm, 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 I'm I've gone against going against Ohio State. I'm gonna <laughs> fucking, I had the worst weekend of my life last weekend, period. I'm sorry I told you about the Seahawks. Russell Wilson looks absolutely like he should have been mimicking more. Hold on, hey, you, hey, <laughs> hey, you remember that? You came in and said, yeah, before we get to college, oh, yeah. I got some shit to say about the NFL. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> Just let my nuts hang and absolutely got fucking castrated. <laughs> so, uh, I'm taking Ohio State to beat Michigan. Um, I think Michigan is better. I heard AJ earlier talking about Michigan's a little more relevant. I just think Ohio State has their number. I just don't know if Harbaugh can get over the hump. Uh, I think Ohio State's trying to say, fuck it, we're going into this BCS playoff game on a high note. We're scoring a lot of points. Another L.A. quarterback representing and up for the Heisman. Uh, Another L.A. quarterback with SC and UCLA. How do you get out of town, JB? How do you get out of town? L.A.'s the glitz and glamour. Uh, Hey, I'm going to tell you right now, when Pete Carroll was here, they would have had probably two, if not three, of those quarterbacks at SC right now. Now, would they have entered the portal? Maybe. I don't know. It's hard for me to understand because the the generations have changed. But I still think SC would have signed at least two of them fuckers. Instead of DJ (laughs) goes to Clemson, Bryce goes to Alabama, Shroud goes to Ohio State. You got you got my man from Long Beach Poly, Long Beach, California, at Ole Miss wrecking shop with Lane, first ten win season in the history of Ole Miss. Um, you know, Corral. So you got four of the top five Heisman candidates all from LA, and we can't get one of them. Well, not we. I'm not Well, sorry. ain't nobody going to the UCLA USC game. Yeah, nobody wants to be a part of it. Traffic. If one of those quarterbacks were there, maybe they would. No, it's the traffic, you know, over there. You guys got that traffic. Too much. I, I, I am starting to get real irritated with the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, I got road rage. Uh so that so so you got the iron right, ball. JB. Huh? No, no, no. I thought AJ was gonna have a question for you, but I'm excited to get you uh, to the Iron Bowl. I want to hear his picks. Okay. You got Iron Bowl. Bama's favored by 20. I'm gonna. I think Bama's gonna make a statement um, going into the playoff as well. I, I'm gonna pick them to cover the 20. Um, I think they're gonna blow Auburn out. Now, if they don't, then I'm. I'm really, I'm really suspect on them trying to go into Georgia. JB, hey, did you see Saban stand up for his guys? I. Yeah, yeah. I, and then, how'd you like that? I. I love it, man. I, I love what he says most of the time, man, to be honest, because, you know, you know what he's doing. People don't realize he's just murdering you in recruiting every time he gets in front of a mic because he don't do social media. And for him to kill recruiting on without doing one thing on social media is just proven that his resume and his track record, getting guys to the NFL, getting them coached up, um, limited transfer portal guys leave his place. Um, they have left a few lately, but not as many as. The norm. Um, 
I think the kids see it, man. You know, the cool part about it is DJ, the quarterback at Clemson, his dad, Dave, Big Dave. I grew up with the whole family out here. Yona, a good friend of mine, is his Dave's brother. Uh, Saban actually called Big Dave right after that interview and got on the phone with Big Dave and his son. His son's the number one player in America out here in L.A. He's like a 6'7", tight end, 280, runs 4'5". <laughs> and that's DJ's little brother. And uh, Saban, everybody and their mom's offering him, obviously. But Saban finished that interview and called him. And just think about that in recruiting. I mean, that's just huge. And the kid sees it and hears Saban and it's like, oh, man. And, you know, one of the top quarterbacks visited uh, from from L.A. as well, visited Alabama last weekend. I, I played with the kid at Compton College, uh, the kid's dad, actually, Nick. Um, he's one of the top quarterbacks in America everybody's offered. He visited Alabama and just said he was in awe of just how Saban conducts a meeting on campus like he he bring, he breaks down how to really get evaluated as an nfl uh gm how how they're going to evaluate you he does it on the campus visit which a lot of schools don't i used to do it as a juco coach put your chest put your put your hands on my on my chest and let's walk backwards how long is your reach how big are your hands like people don't do that shit and, and it's and it's funny when when you know at the, at the end of the day when you're doing that to left tackles and O linemen you want to see their reach for fucking so Freeney can't beat your ass on the edge right you want to <laughs> see how long his hand his wingspan is so like his reach is they don't do that shit no more so when you do that to these kids I think they get in awe and they uh they they understand they're gonna get coached up and I think that's why Saban's killing it and, and he don't six need seven Twitter. tight end you said in Uyunglele yeah man he's a he's a sophomore in high school jeez. <laughs> Could you imagine how awesome that was? YouTube that kid, dude. You should see him hurdling dudes, running by dudes. Like, does he play basketball we're too? Four best high schools in America here, and he's killing them. Does he play basketball? AJ just asked that. Does he play hoops? I, I don't know if he does or not, man. I don't know. He's, I, you know, you think he's uncoordinated at 15 years old, sophomore in high school. Um, they actually got upset by another powerhouse here last week. So that so tomorrow night, uh, modern day number one team in America plays Servite, the number like three team in America, um, for the for the, our local SoCal championship. Is the uh, is that the one Brawny's playing for? Brawny, uh, Sierra. Oh, he's uh, Sierra Canyon. 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 They they lost too, uh, but they're in a lower division. We got so many fucking divisions. It's like get, everyone gets a trophy here. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe that's part of the problem too. You know, USA yeah. and UCLA. Too many trophies out there, but four out of the top five quarterbacks all being from L.A. and none of them being in L.A. is awesome. And I guess James Franklin is not going to be going. Huh? He just got a 10-year deal, that guy. Let's go. How about that? Hey, go congrats, James. Yeah. Yeah. What you say, JB? Go six and four, get $100 million. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, It's valuable, though. JB, it's so valuable to have your name out for other jobs. Like you get, high, They get scared you're going to leave. Leverage. You give you a big deal. Oh, leverage big time. Remember, I told you guys a couple weeks ago on the show, though, that he wasn't coming to NC. There's just no way. I just didn't feel it was the right fit. I mean, I just don't get it, though, man. Like, they must really love you or understand that they're the difference between James Franklin and the next guy Penn State can hire must be miles and miles of difference in their opinion. Because if not, I don't see how you're paying a guy that's never won anything significant. In and the same him. conference, friend. in the same huh? conference as Ohio State, by the way, who in is Michigan and Michigan State. I mean, I, I, I really don't see it. Uh, like yeah. even the Tucker hire. I mean, the Tucker resigned to me. Like good, good, great, high, great signing after you get drubbed by eighty last week. <laughs> <time. laughs> you have a coach, JB. The money doesn't matter if he stinks in three years. You fire him. You give him twenty million dollars. How you doing? Keep it moving. Find the next guy. The money doesn't affect anything. Yeah, because they got Rocket Mortgage or whatever. Yeah, behind got two them. billionaires that are funding it all. Oh, yeah, no doubt. It's a recyclable business, man. I, I wish, like we talked before, like month, year, you know, last year, man. It's like you, uh, these these doctorate holding people, man, just aren't very bright. <laughs> <laughs> hold, hey, hold on, JB. So Penn State's one of those jobs, though, isn't it? Like, if that became open, that becomes a job where people want to go. Is it not or no? I don't know, man. After the oh, whole, you know, oh, fall, oh, wow. oh. we are. So, dropping the soap and all that shit, I don't know, Whoa. man. Whoa. Oh. I mean, think about it, man. I mean, let me ask you this. Let me ask AJ's perspective. He's a Ohio State alum in that league, in that division, the wideout game, the huge game every year. Would Ohio State and Michigan and Michigan State not just murder them in recruiting with that pitch? Like, I'd be killing that thing to parents. 
You want yeah. your parent? You want your kid to go in the same bathroom where that? Oh, jeez, oh, 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 gee, they rebuilt it, maybe. But so, like, I, I'm just saying, I would be doing it. Hey, I, I don't know, know if that's a heavy recruiting. Tool. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> JB, that's you recruiting. Okay, you're a different level, obviously, different animal. But AJ, you were recruited by Penn State. You were going to Ohio State regardless, though, right? Because you are like the picture of Ohio, basically. Yeah, I mean, if Ohio State offered me, I knew I was going to Ohio State. Yeah. But that's an Ohio kid. I think there's Pennsylvania kids that feel like that too. Uh, I mean that whole about that's Penn State. I mean Pennsylvania yeah. and Ohio's are, are hubs now. I don't know if you guys know that AJ May, or, 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 you know Pat. I don't know if you do, but there's like five hubs in America in regards to recruiting. So you got California, Texas, t Florida, Ohio, Pennsylvania. Yeah. I believe Georgia and is a hub. So those are like big enough per capita to have enough players to actually be the fit, uh, you know, real, real dominant players at five star, four star. They base it on that per capita. Like to me, South Carolina is not a hub, but per capita, South Carolina is the most talented recruiting bed in the country. But people don't look at that shit like that because they want to see the populous uh, states like California putting out so many, but we have so many guys too. Like, yeah, you know you're saying, mean? yeah, the, you're going to hit somewhere. It's a wide net in California, Florida. There's pockets there. of Florida where the per capita are insane as well there pennsylvania and ohio always has been i thought it was potentially going to stop or start dwindling though because a lot of northern kids were going down to florida so they could train all year and play all year and everything like that it's just uh it's and you know what they're great like i stopped recruiting floridians <laughs> i stopped recruiting california kids when i was in kansas because i was going strictly ohio Det michigan detroit area toledo uh even all the way down to columbus cleveland cincinnati I'd, i would just drive from detroit and work my way to toledo akron all the way down into indianapolis actually i would take that drive and um because i had a few good indianapolis kids from the inner city too at indy um so i would do that drive and it was just the kids are still mill tough nose they want to fucking they, they don't care about cold weather in kansas they don't care about going to the mall or the or the or the club yeah. and they're not like a california or florida kid where they need a you know some hot blonde and and 80 degree weather they don't give a shit and those kids were were they proved me right man they were they were tough nosed kids that played for us and helped us out a lot. hell yeah hell yeah Hell oh, yeah. No, What's that? The Rust North. Belt. The Rust, Rust Belt. Yeah. You hit that Rust Belt there is who yeah. you're talking about. It's And you could go from Detroit to Toledo to Akron, like it's an hour, hour and a half, two hours. Like that drive is shit is nothing. Now, you know, like I can't go to L.A. from my house in two hours. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, go ahead, Ty. Coach JB, we were talking about it before you came on. We know you can't stay in the transfer portal, but a guy like Quinn Ewers, who leaves high school early, goes to Ohio State, is making all this money with his uh, NIL deals, and then he's sitting behind a guy in Stroud who you know has a, a several years left, might win the Heisman this year. Like, is it is it different in your eyes if a guy like that is trying to transfer somewhere else to play immediately? Nah, none of it's different in my eyes. I hate that shit. What? <laughs> this, this is the deal, though. This is the deal. Ty, let me ask you this. I don't know if you can Google it real quick. How old is that Cures kid? 18, I think. 17, 18. Well, make sure you know that because I, I bet he's 19, 20. Is this is the reason I say that. Whoa. These parents hold these kids back in high school now or oh. in junior high for a reason. They oh, try yeah. to or in kindergarten. They do it in kindergarten now. Or junior they, yeah, year. They're, they're holding them back early <laughs> so they can be that special dude and get this uh, edge and – Nowadays, if I'm day, I'm telling that kid, if you're the dude, if you're really that guy, Stroud ain't going to be here for many years, like you said, Ty. That motherfucker's going to the league after one more year. You only got to be out of high school three years, so you only really got another year. He's a redshirt freshman. It's already been two years. Next year, he could be gone. This guy could be the guy. So I'd be preaching that to the kid instead of just saying, all right, let me see your Twitter decommit and fucking enter the portal. <laughs> like, I... I I would be using that because there's no way Stroud should be there longer than another year. And if I'm day, I'm pushing them out so I can get better and more kids in like Saban does. Like, let's get the kid matriculated through the process. Educate, matriculate, graduate. That was my motto. That should be a lot of other people's. But I don't know the whole mental mindset of these kids nowadays. They all seem pretty weak minded, but hopefully there's some tough ones in there. Um, you know, like you were talking about the Arch Manning kid and all that. I mean, I think he's older. But look at it. I don't know. But I think these kids are older than you think, too. Um, especially, you know, you got kids transferred from California to go to IMG Academy for a year and then come back. And then it's just become a, 
a, a mockery, shit show. Right? Yeah, a shit show. Yeah, and shit that show. that had been happening for a long time. You know, it the, it's been happening for a long time. I remember you know, the guy that started it, man. I have to give a prop shout out. One of my best friends in the world passed away the other day of cancer. Um, only 40 shit, eight years old, man. He he was the oh. guy that started the high school transfer portal deal. He was the number one running back in America. He went from banning in the hood in Compton, uh, L.A. area, Carson transferred to modern day where he's a, one of the most famous alum ever to come out of there. Um and then he went to the play at Washington State. He was Drew Brees' uh, – I mean, Drew Bledsoe's running back. They were real good for Mike Price era. And then he got drafted by the Niners. Uh, Derek Sparks, shout out to him. He shout out. Passed, uh, shout out. He, was, he started the Cleats First Cancer Foundation, if you don't know, out in Seattle. And uh, he was coaching a Division three school out here in, in Seattle, out there in Seattle. And I, I went and spoke for him a couple times a year. And uh, – yeah, man, his daughter beat cancer, and then Derek uh, succumbed to it on uh, on Wednesday, man. So it was a tough one. He's a good dude, L.A. Compton dude, uh, grew up together. He actually coached me later on in life in JUCO. Um, but uh, he uh, he started this whole thing. Like, he was the first one to do it in high school. Yeah, so rest, obviously rest in peace to mm-hmm. your friend there and coach and that. But holding players or holding people back a year in school – that was always a move that some people use, you know, in, in like my era of high school. I assume AJ, it was probably happening in Ohio as well. My parents enrolled me as soon as I was able. I was the youngest fucking dude in my class. <laughs> yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah. I, there was guys in, in grades below me that were older than me playing on teams yeah. that I was playing on or whatever. And I'm like, this yeah, is we un- didn't think of that. We couldn't do it. My dad would have called me the biggest pussy in the world. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I think that's- he would have fucking been drinking a beer at like eight in the morning calling me a pussy. <laughs> go, to, go to school. Connor, Connor did his junior. Connor uh, did his junior year twice. Yeah, he did that his junior year. He went from a public school to a private school, enrolled as a junior again. Then he tackled AJ Dillon that next year, his second. I guess his first fifth, first, fifth year in high school, first, first senior, senior year. Thank you. AJ Dillon was in seventh grade playing for the high school. Wow. Connor tackled him, and still to this day, that clip airs. Mm-hmm. Still airs out There's there. There's a message sending hit. I mean, AJ Dillon said it himself. I'm not, you know, don't shoot the messenger here. I'm just telling you what he said. <laughs> you were just a 20 year old. I was hey, hey, uh, yeah, smoking cigs <laughs> and lottery tickets. Do uh, you have a question for Coach JB? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, Coach, speaking of Arch Manning, do you think that it, whether he did you know, stay back a year or not, he should just decide to go to Texas next year and become a starting quarterback? Is that what he's committed to? No, he no. hasn't committed no. anywhere, but we're just thinking like Sarkeesian's offense is an NFL offense. Arch, he's got his brother or his his uncle, two of them, and his grandpa and his dad, Coop, who was a hell of a player, basically breaking down football with him and for him since he's – I don't know, probably in fifth grade. I assume he'll be able to do what Mac Jones did in that Sarkeesian offense for one year. And it looks like Texas is going to need something. That Everybody is assuming that's where he's going to go because the NFL ready, but it could be any school that Arch wants. But imagine if he graduated early from that academy and was in there starting as a true freshman. That'd be fucking sweet. NIL. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. I, you know, that's why they hold him back because they want him to go to this college and be instant. They want this, this kids nowadays – uh, they want instant gratification, man, which we never, you know, we, we knew we were going to a place like Alabama or even a Texas, you know, back in the day with all its lore and, and, and history. You're like, you know what? I'm going to go there and I'm going to probably red shirt, be OK with it, bust my ass in practice. That mindset is over. Like if you don't start as a freshman now, you're entering the portal. You're decommitting on Twitter because there's just no more. uh You know, nuts and guts, in my opinion. Oh, man. great. No nuts and guts. You're saying a little grit. Yeah, they, they want it right now, man. They, they Because you know why? They get peer pressure. They get clowned by their homies that went to LSU and they actually started at corner or something as a true freshman. These kids go back home and be like, oh, man, my boy's tweeting out. He's balling against Alabama. I got a red shirt. I'm I'm de- I'm transferring. And that's what you get. A lot of peer pressure now. It's so it's so soft, man. It's just it's unbelievable. But I don't know. I don't believe. You know, if if he's a true high school senior leaving early and start, you think he's gonna start? I, I don't know. It's far fetched to me, man. It's just you're not mat- you're not mature enough. He's Arch Manning. Yeah. He's Arch Manning, though. I mean, mentally, he's gonna I, I be mean, mature enough. You know? Yeah, I hear you, man. I mean, he might be the other Manning too and be a fucking accountant. We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> JB, I'm what's just, what's gonna happen though? Is this gonna comedian. continue this way, or do you think it's gonna go back to how it was, where people are? You may sit behind a guy for two and a half years before you get a chance. Come back, Joey Burrow. I, yeah, like I don't know, man. Like 
I, I think the NCAA has set this standard. Like they're they're not doing anything about it. They they created this portal for all these people sitting in this in this line. You know, two thousand plus kids sitting in a line to go to one hundred and twenty seven D one. They're only going to take a selected few of those two thousand. You're not even going to get probably a hundred out of that portal to actually go be successful at a four year. So. You're just wasting it. And now those kids all want instant gratification. Like I said, they want to go back to a four year powerhouse school that they similar to what they left, uh, just left. So Alabama guy transfers. He wants to go to a Clemson or a Va Tech or wherever. And now you never really hear from him again instead of going to Juco. And now, in my opinion, I'm sad to say this, but I think Juco is going to flounder oh. and it's going to become really, really uh, oh. a desolate desola- uh, destination. It's not going to be what it once was, which actually will create some nuts and guts for these kids to understand that, OK, I was in football jail for a year. And now I understand and really know how to get out of this and go back to a four year and dominate and be nasty about it. They don't want that shit. They want to go right from a nice dorm to another nice dorm. So the perspective isn't getting put into place, you say, by a cha- uh, trip to JUCO potentially about what they had, what it could no. be like, what this world could, you know, all change into. So let's. You know the problem, Pat? Too. Yeah. We, there's pilots in the world and there's passengers. Oh. We got too many fucking passengers thinking they're pilots. Like, and you know what the problem is? The coaches and the parents are allowing these po- these passengers to pilot the ship without ever learning how to fucking drive. Woo! They haven't learned how to drive, and, it, and, and we got to go hey! to pilot the ship. And our coaches are our coaches are allowing these passengers to pilot their program. Oh, coach, that shit don't work. Do it this way. And the coach is like, okay, because if I don't, you'll transfer. <laughs> and then the parent, he, she don't want to. I don't know if you guys saw that video last week. The, the the fucking late, the white girl in school hits the black teacher. Oh yeah. Did you see all that shit? Oh yeah. Uh-huh. And like. Like, that's learned trait. That's learned behavior. Like, what's happening at the household? Like, you called your mama and cussed on the phone and told her not only that this teacher um, is a piece of shit, but, like, if I called my mama, my mom would have hung the phone up and been, and I would have been scared of shit. Driving up to where you were. What are you Driving even doing? Yeah. yeah. It all goes back to accountability. I mean, that's the way the world is. We're losing it. Hopefully some generation will bring it back. But I got faith when there's guys like you, guys like AJ, and guys like we have in this room right now. We'll put it on us to change the future. COVID cowboy, I'm looking at you. Connor with the mullet, I'm looking at you. Ty, don't you even think about letting the bullshit run rampant in the next generation. Won't do it. Won't do it. Never. Hopefully we get a spot to to do it, though. You know, you got to have a platform, too. When two minutes... I, I I I believe too bad too. Sadly enough, there's too many cats with a big platform that's not pushing that narrative though. They're pushing the soft one, which is just escalating the process. It's just making it worse because these soft motherfuckers on these platforms that could be changing the youth are enabling the youth. Oh, okay. and but anyway, I all right. I look, I got Penn State all minus right. one and a half at Michigan State. I'm taking Michigan State. Uh, right. The hundred million dollar man has to earn his keep. Let's go. Um, and he's gonna take both a six million dollar man. And who, 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 who? You're taking Michigan State. Mm-hmm. I'm taking Michigan State plus uh, one and a half. You guys are top ten school, and you were getting uh, the the spread was nineteen and a half against yeah. another top ten school. And now you're Bullshit. playing Penn State, which Penn other than State. Jordan Stout, I don't think they're good at football at all. Oh. You guys are getting points hey, there too. I you guys stink. No, no, no. Two hundred million, million dollars. What's Two hundred million dollars to be on the field tomorrow with no rings. <laughs> <laughs> Um, unless they're married. Um, and then you got, you got, you got the battle of Bedlam, man, Oklahoma, oh, yeah. Oklahoma state. It's always a fun one, but Oklahoma's won six in a row. I'm going to pick Oklahoma to win the seventh one. Um, it's Oklahoma state is, is I think minus four. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm taking Oklahoma. Oklahoma state is favored over Oklahoma. Oh, yeah. Oklahoma state's higher ranked as well. Really? Yeah. Hey, good for old mullet guy. Yeah, oh, Gundy. Yeah. Hey, go pokes out there. Mm-hmm. All right, boomer, we're taking. All right. You know, I wouldn't let him in my office, by the way. So, Mike Gundy. Uh, Why? Because the mullet? No, nah, he was just—he just a shady ass motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> so, North Carolina, North Carolina State, Ohio State, Michigan. I got Bama, Auburn. All Penn right. State, Michigan State, right. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Those are the best ones I can see. I don't know. It's rivalry weekend, but, you know, you got Oregon, Oregon State. That game is meaningless. 
Um, <laughs> you know what's interesting game, Minnesota, Wisconsin, because I think if Wisconsin can win, they're right back in the driver's seat to be representative, right? And that. In that North Big Ten yes. Championship. Oh, yeah. in the leaders' division or yeah. the legends' division? That was the leaders' division. Oh, yeah. oh the yeah. leaders' division, of course. Um, you know, I don't know. You know, you got Pitt Syracuse, which is, you know, for that rivalry, but it's not Pitt Syracuse's shit. And you got Clemson, South Carolina, which is normally a big deal in the Carolinas. That's really not shit. Um, <laughs> Notre Dame, Stanford. And I'll leave on this, guys. BYU plays SC, which is not a real rivalry, but. There's a guy going unmentioned who's a good friend of mine, Kalani Sataki, the head coach at BYU, who's turning them around. They're number 13, they're 9 and 2. They had a great year last year. He's not being mentioned for the SC job, which, in my opinion, should be top couple names in the whole mentioning process. I don't understand why. He's from LA, he's a Polynesian, he can recruit, he's turned programs. And he was Sark's fullback, by the way, when Sark was the quarterback at BYU. Oh, okay, okay that makes sense. Great uh, friend, good friend, man. Uh, you know, I, to me, he'd be a great fit at SC uh, over the guys I'm hearing. Well, they so. need to let Us in there then. Us yeah. yeah. at USC yeah. would be awesome. Uh, just like you, JB, we appreciate you stopping by, brother. Enjoy the hell out of this weekend. I think you're going to win this weekend. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? got to do something, man. Shit. Hey, shoot for the stars, land on the moon. Yeah, well, last week you shot for the stars and you landed in the uh, debris that was floating around a space station that they're a little bit worried about. Hey, I should have been at the Oklahoma-Notre Dame game. That's the game they should play every year, the shit bowl. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Coach JB, we appreciate it. Thank you, JB. Thank hey, you, buddy. Coach. I love that guy. Good conversations. Yeah. A lot of picks here. And a couple of times I didn't know who he was picking. But mm -hmm. yeah. I do know that there's a lot of games going on, and that's what he tells me every single yeah. week. That's right. Big round. How about Oklahoma State? Good for Oklahoma yeah. State. Yeah. yeah. Go Pokes. I thought Oklahoma was doing a damn thing. You know, they had two quarterbacks. You got no quarterbacks. You got a whole uh, bedlam. <laughs> I thought he said he's going with Oklahoma. Oh, yes. so, I thought so. Oklahoma. Yeah, but Oklahoma State is favored in that one, yeah. right. which I did not know. That's what That's, I learned. I didn't know that either. Yeah, me neither. Had no idea. But also, did not know Ohio State was good until last week whenever they were 20-point favorites over this Michigan State team, which was supposed to be the best in the history of Michigan State. Uh, yeah. they I don't fall closely enough. Next year, I'm going to remind myself to watch a little bit more college football. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Are you surprised that Kalani Sataki at uh, BYU didn't hire JB to be an assistant coach? It seems like a good fit at BYU. Yeah, I think JB at BYU could be good for all parties. You know what I mean? Good conversation, good narrative pitching. Hey, honestly, though, if Sataki gets hired at USC, he should bring JB in, no question. Yeah, yeah. consultant here. Yeah. I didn't know uh, Mike, Sark was a Mormon. He went to BYU. Yeah. Just like Jim McMahon. Well, different time. Similar, though. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I don't know if he's a practicing Mormon anymore. I don't think he is, I think. Because I don't think you're allowed to do a lot of the stuff that those guys did. Or yeah. the pole assassin, too. Rampant Wait. booze hound. The pole assassin's a uh, Mormon? Well, she is Whoa. part of the Texas staff. She shits in Texas suite, I thought. Oh, you're talking about Sarkeesian still being a Mormon. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, we, we've decided we don't think Sarkeesian's like a Mormon, Mormon anymore. Okay. The Mormons try to live every day as if they were Jesus. Yep. Steve oh, yeah. Young. He's Mormon. Steve he is. Young. <laughs> Kyle Van Noy. Mm. He's Mormon. He is a member of them. Larry Is he? Yeah. yeah. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> L. Ron Hubbard? What's he? Oh, he's high up over here, isn't he? Mm hmm. Okay. Or is that wow, science? right? Is that Scientology? That is Scientology. Gosling's a Mormon? <laughs> yeah, Paul Walker. Whoa, Pablo? Peace, yeah. Pablo. I didn't know Pablo was a Latter day Saint, man. Donnie Marie Osmond, yeah, it's crazy. Holy well, rest shit. in peace to everybody who's passed away who's a Mormon. Yep. All right, let's uh let's pick this weekend's game. Okay, AJ? <laughs> let's go, go, boys. Let's go, go, boys. go boys. Let's get out of here on this feel good Friday. Let's do it. All, All right. right. I am two and one going into an NFL Sunday, week twelve. AJ one and two. Loser. AJ, you will start here. <laughs> Titans, Patriots, six and a half. Whew. This one's not easy for me. Um uh, Shut up. You know what? I'm taking Braves and the Titans. All right, I'm yes. taking the Patriots. This one is easy for me, I think. Go to hell, AJ. Right. Um, okay. It's fine, Connor. I don't care. I, I, I think Braves will. I don't believe in hell, but yeah, keep going. I. Well, go back, please. Let's go full screen. So that. <laughs> so, so that means you don't believe in heaven then either. No, that's false. I absolutely believe in heaven. I just ah, think well. hell. You can create your own hell, so I don't believe in hell. Well, life is a living hell, but if you if you don't believe in hell, then you can't believe in the opposite. Or, who says? Who told me? Who says? Okay, so this is like your own thing. You're creating your own thing. Do you believe in a purgatory where you have to hang out before you're thrusted into heaven? And is that mm. the hell that people are talking about then? I've never thought about that. Well, you don't believe uh, in the devil either then if you don't believe yeah, in exactly. hell. Yeah, exactly. Oh, so you don't think devil's the real thing? I don't know. I'm sure the devil is something. 
Well, I don't well, think it's a dude. I don't think it's some dude jamming a pitchfork up your ass. Well, he might be a guy on a fiddle, though, because, oh, you know. Yeah, okay, right. when uh, Jordan. Yeah, oh, you're right. He's like, what's that, Steel? Bang, what happened? We're going to make a deal. He's a hard one. Don't have a ride in there. Bang, 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 bang. Georgia. Bang, 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 bang. You guys know all the words. The devil raises his That is a banger. Yeah. Hey, there's another oh, one. Yeah. Yeah. So you know how last week I told you it's that I had a dream one time, especially after watching Yes Man, that it walked into a uh, Howl at the Moon, mm-hmm. grab a guitar. Sure. And, Wish you would step back up my bed, my friend. I want to do that. Another one that would be sweet, it'd take a lot of time, I've heard, is walk out there and then. <laughs> Anytime the devil went down to Georgia, it was performed live. Ooh. Electric <sighs> fact. The Rossin on the boat. Oh, uh-huh. Steam coming oh, off. Yeah. Smoking. One day the devil's going to win, but... Not today. Not, not today. fucking Johnny's no, no. around. Johnny, <laughs> he don't fuck around. No. no. <laughs> it's unbelievable, AJ. So you think that song's a bunch of food gays? No, I like that song. It's a great song. No, but you're saying it's a lie, a tall tale, fairy tale, uh, non-fiction? I no, I never really dove into it. No, you're saying it's fiction. Yeah, you have. All right, anyways, let's get back to uh, <laughs> the hell that is. AJ's week 12. Oh. Texans minus two and a half. Okay, you got Texans minus two and a half. Someone's good. Someone's Me good too. Man. I like Tyrod Taylor. Oh. Uh, Eagles, Giants, three and a half. I got to take Eagles. The Giants are so bad. Give me the Eagles. Yeah. They might make a push for that. Division. Here we go. I got one first where we separate each, ourselves right here. Well, we already did with the Titans and the Patriots. I'm taking the Colts, though. I'll take the Bucks. Smart Bucks favored on the road in Indianapolis when Robert Mathis is going into the Ring of Honor. All the OGs will be in the building. There's no way Carson's getting three alongside Jonathan Taylor and losing. With that being said, a lot of the coaches for the teams that were around when Robert Mathis was doing the things Ooh. that he was doing to earn his spot in the Ring of Honor are coaching the Tampa Bay Buccaneers team. So they might have a little juice as well, Donna. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And I like Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm a big fan. Coach AQ ain't going to be able to get the boys going enough, though. The Colts continue to ride this wave of greatness, plus three at home. That's wild. Falcons, Jags. Jags getting two at home against the Falcons. I mean, I don't feel great about what the Falcons are doing, but I'm taking the Falcons minus two. All right. I got the Jags. Wow. What What are you looking at? What's wrong? Uh, Diggs was pointing. I didn't know if he thought that the line went down and moved to one and a half. I'm on Jags. Okay, I got the Jags as well. Let's go Panthers, Dolphins. Panthers. Oh, so you're getting insider trading, some, some tips. No, 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 no. No, this is live, real time. COVID yeah. Cowboy was pointing like this. He had, he had a pretty good I wanted feel. him to say it, and yeah. he didn't do yeah, it, and he but did. you did. And I did. I came through. Or right, maybe I want some of Diggs' uh, advice, too. There's no God. Gump, I need your advice, Gump. All right, how about this one? Panthers, Dolphins, Gump. Which Turn one? those two guys against each other. Dolphins are covering. They're already against each other. I'll take the Dolphins. <laughs> what, who do you got? Oh, I wanted the Panthers, but I'm going to take the Dolphins. Okay, I'll take the uh, Panthers. <laughs> uh, all right, I got There we go. I got, I got the Panthers. Steelers, Bengals. It's hot in the AFC Ooh. North. Steelers getting four on the road in Cincinnati. Just came out that TJ Watt was full practice. What? 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 I got the Steelers plus four. AJ. I will take the Bengals minus four. Are okay. oh, you Homer? Uh, okay. It's a plus yep. four for I sure. Am. Let's go to Chargers, Broncos at two and a half. Uh, AJ. Chargers minus two and a half. Me too. I like Herbert. Let's go Vikings, Niners. Ooh. Tough one. I like Niners minus three. You love the Vikings. That thing with Everson Griffin happened this week. Oh. So there, I saw an interview with Dalvin Cook, and they definitely don't see him as in the best spot. All right, give me the Niners. All right, give me the fucking Niners. Then. Man, I'm going to regret that one. Though. Well, you can put that one on Connor, then. Yeah, you can put it on me. I took a liking to the Vikings when they ruined our boost. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it made sense if you listened. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, I'll take the Niners. Golly. Niners are getting hot, too. Oh, Thielen canceled on us, too. Yep. Yeah, he did. 
Yeah, and I like Thielen, but <laughs> give me the Niners. <laughs> High Rams and Packers. Woo. Packers getting one at home? Yeah. Is this a 425 game? It's yeah. two now. Is Zito saying it's two now? Packers getting two at home. Uh, LaFleur asked about Aaron Donald being pissed about the Packers ending the Rams season last year. Matt LaFleur said, I want to cry. Mm -hmm. oh. That via Matt Schneidman, oh, a tweeter in a cover of the Green Bay Packers. Aaron Donald and the Rams travel to the freezing cold Green Bay to take on the toe-broken, fractured-led Packers with Aaron Rodgers. Your thoughts? Getting two at home, AJ. Getting two at home is a little surprising. I think the toe probably comes into to play here, but I, I still like the Packers at plus two. Me too. Let's move on to the Sunday night matchup. The AFC North is on display. The Dog Pine Bronx travel to Baltimore to take on the, the smartest bird in the sky. That's yeah. right. The Raven. How's Baker doing? Banged up. He's banged up. He's got a torn labrum. What? And, uh, what? He's what? worse than he was, right? Like physically? No, physically, he's, but mentally, he might have that edge back that we know Baker shows up with because he has been getting an onslaught of terrible things said about him mm -hmm. from the Browns conversation. Uh, how do you feel? You know what? I'm going to take the Browns here at plus three and a half. Give me Lamar Jackson, fresh off his poop. Mm -hmm. Minus three and a half. He's going to do what he do. The Browns might be heartbroken. They might be ended. Next week, we're going to have to say it. Yep. Baker Mayfield might be dead. <laughs> Whoa. Dun, dun, dun. Here comes Jimmy. All right. Show's over. We did it. We did it. Where good. are you tonight for SmackDown? It was a good Monday, Thursday, Thursday Friday, 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 Friday. Um, We are in Greensboro. Greenboro? Greens. Greens. Multiple Greensboro, North Carolina. Tonight, Sweet. obviously. Sweet. Only had one uh, sport coat at the new house, too, so. Okay. It's good. Bring me back some tobacco. Yep, I'll grab some dip for you. Thank you. Thank you. Some ciggies. If you're going to the tobacco capital of the world. I'll bring some uh, bag slap and tobacco. Oh, Ooh, some red man for the pipe. Yeah, I always thought red man would be the one that maybe I maybe I don't like the score or the Copenhagen or what? or anything Why? else like that. Maybe <laughs> maybe that's what you guys are doing. And then I, I said I'll get into this cool bag one, you know, and I put yeah. it in yep. there. I was like, oh, this is awesome, you know. Sidewalk. Two and all, how you doing? How you doing? And then all of a sudden, the mouth started sweating again. Like, oh, this yep. got the same shit in it. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, it's just a different yeah. version of it. Yeah, I've never. Tastes better. You grab some beach nut oh. too, my friend. Beach nut. I love to spit some beach, beach nut in that dude's eyes. Ain't the country boy hands are fine. Country boy hands are fine. Little beach nut. I bet there's. Redman like does look good. It looks good and smells good. I just. The uh, brown bag guy is better than. It got me. I mean, it got me. Sugar free. I was like, oh, that looks. I've so never cool. tried it. I think I may love Tastes it. I'm going to try it. But it, it, if I was going to dip something, I'd want to do that over dip. I want to let you know. I thought it was going to be cool. I thought it was going to be great, and I hated it. I had the same puking feeling that I had from the other shit, and especially now that there's things like Canada dips available mm -hmm. and other alternatives. It's like if you don't why would chaw you get into it, now? and you're doing that, it will trigger a gag reflex oh, so often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, yeah. See people who have never done it before just chewing it. And, I, is I it technically like, though better for you? That stuff's no. got the juice. No, no, no. I mean, none of it's good it's for it. So it, juicy. But so the jazz. tobacco doesn't have all like the the little stuff, the micro that gets into your bloodstream. Yeah, it yeah, probably it is better for you. But you're saying it doesn't have little glass yeah. shards or little whatever. Fiberglass fiber shards. Glass, yeah. yeah, but there ain't nothing like you know training camp. Normally, <laughs> offensive linemen, you know, we're all sitting around, and they're like, you want you want some? I'm like, nope, I do not. No, no, this year it's going to be different. Come on, oh. we got nothing. I'm like, all right, let me get it. I put it in there. <laughs> I'm sitting there. And, you know, I'm out of uh -huh. here. and then getting it out is worse. Oh, yeah. Getting it out is worse than anything. You go, and I had to go in a sink and oh, do yeah. like the whole thing, and then I was dizzy for the next fucking yeah. 45. You probably start with pouches if you're going to do dip. This was, uh, I guess the pouches were still always a thing. But, yeah, everybody had the fine cut. Straight oh, up. Okay. Yeah. Pucks, my friend. Chuck them in there. So one time I said, I'm going to get ahead of this, you know, and I'm going uh, to buy the Red Man myself. The only tobacco I've ever bought was a Red Man. Mm -hmm. And it was up at training camp because I knew what was coming. I was like, I'm going to get ahead of this thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do my own. And, and when I pull this thing out and I start smacking it, everybody's going to be like, oh, oh! No! 
you know, I'm gonna do that whole thing. And I pulled it out. I started smacking it. All right, here we go, people. Get on in. Come on in. I took my thing, put it in there, and it was, <laughs> it was the same. It was the same situation. I just How long in. did it take for I, that? It was probably six minutes. I think. I think about six minutes in. Six, seven minutes yeah. in. First couple, I was like, oh, yeah, this is stuff I'm fresh to do. <laughs> this is, you know, this is. It is a juicy one. But now, there's no reason to even get into it if you're not. No. no. Not at all. All right, that's the show. Get a spittoon. You could, you could chew uh, tobacco in there and just spit right into it. Those, I, I, had, I walked into somebody's house, their spittoon was, I guess, big. Oh, oh yeah. Just walk in and home. <laughs> My great grandpa had one. Yeah, he never missed. He used to drag it around. <laughs> Somebody would just drag it around. <laughs> That's awesome. They're living different lives. Though. Plop, yeah. yeah. You could pay a dude to just drag it around with you all day. Well, I think most of the people that are filling those up now have the. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Hello. Uh, how are you doing? I used to look so cool when I would. <laughs> into. It's bad. That shit is bad for people, man. It's terrible. Mm-hmm. I'm very thankful that my body rejected it every time I gave it a go. A lot of drugs, my body did not do that. You know, a lot of, a lot True. of, mm-hmm. a lot of drugs, my body was like, oh, good time here. Let's give it a go. Nicotine, every single time, was like, this is not for us. I remember some young kid at Ohio State for that first Barstool tailgate show oh. made me hit his jewel. I thought I was oh, dead. Yeah, yeah, I was like, what's careful. in this thing? He's like, oh, it's good for you. It's good for you. I hit it. And like, oh, there's 7,000 cups of coffee worth of nicotine. You just it. smoked 450 <laughs> cigarettes. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I'm just lightheaded. I'm, oh my God, nicotine will kill you. Speaking of that, today's sponsor is public.com. Hell yeah. Love public. We have to do terrible for them. Have to. No, they crush. Let's put it in here, huh? What's up, Fiji? I don't know. It's called Divergence by Sauce Aleco. Oh, Sauce Aleco. Oh, no, we're not supposed to play this. Oh, no. Uh, no. Jesus Uh, Christ. uh, uh, That's from a different. Jeez Louise. It went into another uh, playlist. Play, yeah. Oh, no. We're fucked. You can play this one down there. I'll push play on it. That's a show, actually. We'll see you one day. <laughs> <laughs> see you one day. I, Public.com. Public.com, dude. Just go ahead and check out. If you want to invest, <laughs> they don't Pat take Mac any Fee. money from you. That's right. You have public.com slash Pat McAfee. They'll give you a slice of a, free, uh, a stock. There you, there you go. go. A good one, too. A good one. This is not investment advice. It's valid for U.S. residents 18 plus, subject to account approval. See public.com forward slash disclosures. Once again, this is not investment advice. If you go to public.com uh, forward slash Pat McAfee, not only get a free stock of slice, you also get a chance to see what I'm investing in. Oh, yeah. And that's what public's all about. You get a chance to look at everybody's portfolios, including uh, Shaq, what? Tony Hawk, what? and thousands more. The app is free and you can start with as little as $1 because you can buy slices or portions of stock, or you can even buy full shares. Do what you gotta do. They don't sell your data or information to third parties. If you wanna dabble in the stock market and find out what others are doing uh, to make their money, go to public.com forward slash Pat McAfee. Once again, this is not investment advice. You have no. to be subject to account approval and you gotta be 18 years older. All right, good show. Good show. Now Good I'm going to Greensburg. Hell there yeah. Go. Here we go. Have a great weekend, AJ. I hope you get every bet right. Yeah, we'll, we will see. I'm sure I'm, sure I'm going to knock it out of the park. The Super Boost will be live here shortly, I think, either today or tomorrow. We will nice. promote it. And once again, remember, Super Boost has hit two out of the last three. Boom. That's right. Okay, we haven't been able to say we're on fire because the drop picked by Savage, but this one on Sunday was supposed to be four in a row. Now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like, he, we're going. We're going to get on a heater. And if you don't, only 1.5 million was made yesterday off the Super Boost. I was hoping it'd be much higher, okay? I was hoping it'd be much higher than that. And some people got off the train. I had a lot of people tweet me, oh, didn't know the Saints were going to win because I was on it, okay? Because it was our Super Boost was on it. Oh. I will let you know the tide has turned. Hell yeah. But let us prove it to you first. Mm-hmm. Let this Super Boost start stacking. Oh, yeah. Let the flames continue to build. Oh, yeah. Let the heater kind of leave the station. And then when you join us in week 13, week 14, week huh? 15, huh? it'll be a hell of a time, a hell of a celebration like it was today on this Feel Good Friday. AJ, have an incredible weekend. Tone, Connor, Ty, all the boys, thank you all so much. Thank I'm you, incredibly you, grateful for all of you. Uh, to Coach JB, thank you for your time. Uh, it's been an insane week. I can't wait for next week. AJ, you're the best, buddy. Have fun tonight. Thank you for the investment advice earlier. And I hope no, you it wasn't investment advice. Time. Time. <laughs> You're a prick. Well, Jeez. come on. Yeah. I hope you have a great weekend. It's a fucking holiday. Yeah. It's Feel Good Friday, dude. We yeah. just kicked off like, go watch Santa Claus. He took the Titans.
Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, it's it's, come on, it's business, dude. It's a lot it's of points. Nah. It's a lot of points. I take my emotion out of it, Connor. They just lost it. Life? Dance. I don't care what happened last week. You take emotion out of what? Life? No, picks. Life, too, though, I think, right? I take it out of life. No, I am very emotional. Oh, you're like the macaques. Oh, oh boy. I got I to gotta investigate these macaques because I don't know a whole lot about them. <laughs> hey, they're pretty fascinating. They're cool. They are a fascinating. Did you rewatch the doc last night? No, no, no. But I'm happy it's got back in my brain because I'm going to drop it tonight a lot. <laughs> yeah. oh, Look for yes. a couple gobble bulls and macaques tonight, guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and SmackDown. Please. You know, I was learning about macaques. All right, Cole. The monkey at the top <laughs> remains the monkey at the top for mm -hmm. the forever. Mm -hmm. The, the monkey's baby, the macaque monkey's baby, new king. That's right. New queen. Jay to stay up on top forever. That's what the big goose is. That's right. Yeah. Roman Reigns is the head macaque at the top of the pyramid. And everybody's trying to get up, and guess what? They just can't. This is the macaque society. You mm -hmm. are going to get knocked right back down into your place quickly. There's the Mark Davis looking monkey named mm -hmm. the macaque. Mm -hmm. Boom. Mark Davis actually says, Give me the macaque. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Zito, please. Jesus. Jesus. Oh, God. Give me a cock. Do uh, we know where this one is on the pyramid? Low oh, or high? Uh, it looks to be a little frail. He looks like a peasant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the picture said it was a queen. Queen? Oh, this is top oh, macaque. This is the top macaque, yeah. So that kid is going to be the next king? Uh, not king, but a part of the royal family, yeah, I assume. Yeah, yeah. It depends upon who wears the crown. And Do it, they yeah. kill the young, like the, the ones Dude. below him? No, he's the prince who's promised. Just go watch. Yeah. Go learn about it. You'll learn. Okay. The ones below like have to hunt for the ones above and everything. I mean, it is a full pyramid scheme because yeah. they live on a pyramid and they are the macaques. So... Anyways, it's a doc. You go learn. I'm sick of teaching everybody everything about life. I know. All right. Out of here. See you on Monday, AJ. Cheers, everybody. Thank you all so, so much. Look for the winners of the contest over the next few days. The boys are picking them. Um, did we do any sub PMSs? We did one. Yeah. yeah. We should do another one real quick. We, we did one. We did one. Because we're giving away merch. Hey, Justin Weber says, sup, PMS, are the Cowboys perpetually a mediocre team? They haven't done anything in 20-some-odd years and talked like oh. the Pats. I, every year, every year it is the Cowboys are going to be great. Oh, yeah. And the Cowboys might still be great. We have no idea, but it does feel like they're hit or miss. But yesterday's game, 28 flags, what do you fucking want me to say, says Mike McCarthy. <laughs> I don't even know if that was a real football game, AJ. Yeah, I guess until they prove us wrong, then they kind of are, I guess. But they're, you can't say mediocre. You could say above average right well i think weber was good. talking about the last like 40 years yeah mm -hmm. they, were well, I mean, they had a they had a run there they were pretty damn good what was that 80s 90s 90s, Mid -90s. 90s right? yeah Emma Smith. Trump. michael irvin's electric factory by the way oh, oh yeah he was yeah. on with schultz as you see i saw some clips of him i listened to some of that i've seen some clips he was going in a three-piece suit too I love that, man. All right, we're out of here. Shout out to the SUP PMS. Yeah. Those two will uh, win some merch. The boys will reach out. We can't thank you enough. Cheers, bye.